Um, and there we go, everyone. We are back again for another fantastic conversation on Friday Night Counter-Attack. We are here. We are ready. I am still wheezing. I am still in pain. But it is what it is. And you're here for a gigantic podcast. Another top 10 list as we are recording this for the month of Ramadan. Pretty recording as we normally are. We're actually recording on another day where Joshua Adudonk is beloved Ghana are playing, so I'm saving him from his <laughs> painful grace of watching his national team. I know Jordan and I has just scored a penalty, but Joshua Dudonko being one of our guests today, it's good to have you on, my friend. Are you ready to educate the listeners on your top 10, or as we did last time, a joint top 10 list of the UEFA Champions League's greatest showman slash Mavericks? Are you ready for this one, Joshua? Yeah, we're going to have a good time, man. This is, this is my bag. This is my bag. You yeah. insinuated it last time as well when you're like, oh, back in my day, back in 2004. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this, this, this is what I like to talk about when football was better, when football was grand and it was fantastic to see. So I'm ready for this one and I hope you're the one bringing the entertaining factors to this one to some of the players that you'll be pulling out of the hat as well. But glad to have you back on, Joshua, and I'm ready for this one as well. More ready than Ghana are to actually win the African Cup of Nations <laughs> anytime soon, which is easy, great. Easy, easy. We are winning at the moment. At the moment, but it's all out of your hands at the moment. It's going to be a fun podcast listening back to this in like March or April. And we're just (laughs) seeing what happens with AFCON, which is crazy. Uh, Next up on the podcast, he is the host of the Back of the Net podcast as well. I recently found out he modelled for Arsenal Football Club. in. I recently found out it wasn't a tour of the stadium where his display picture is. But it's good to see him back on the <laughs> podcast as well. I'm hoping he brings the heat. I'm hoping he brings some of his favourite Arsenal players into this list as well because it wouldn't be a showman's podcast without some greatest Arsenal players of all time. So introducing one of my favourite Arsenal uh, content creators right now, it's Matt from Back of the Net Podcast as well. Matthew, good to have you back on, my friend. Yes, if you're not people. bringing If you're not bringing the heat on this one, I'm not sure what the people want from you anymore. See, because this, you see this, band, this bandage here? This bandage is because I burnt myself. If they eat, bro, I'm ready. Man, <laughs> ready. see that? Let's go. Let's go. He's ready Come for on. it. I'm ready for it. It's good to see. And last but not least, the man who uh, inadvertently may have just saved this podcast by inadvertently advertising what to get for a drink to recover from having mm-hmm. bad sinuses and stuff. But I've got the gentrified version and the more marketable version than the authentic version. But I've got someone who is very authentic in what he talks about in football media. He is absolutely fantastic. And recently at the time of speaking, having a conversation um, on the Saeed channel in his car made me laugh. And it was good fun to have a conversation once mm-hmm. again with Traps. So Traps, good to have you back on. I'm ready for this one. Are you ready to show off some of your football knowledge in terms of football mavericks in Champions League history today? I am, I am, I am. First of all, yeah, and I got into big trouble for for, for driving and, and being on that stream. Uh, I don't think many of the people in the, in the comments were, were too happy. What happened but, with it? What happened with the... What, who got you in well, trouble? Did someone snake on you? No, I, didn't, I, didn't get, no, I didn't get into trouble like that, but people just weren't happy because they said our oh, driving and streaming um, is... Uh, is um, not cool, not good, but reality they, is not. I don't know. I, I don't think it breaks the law, but never mind. But, they wouldn't say that to Darren Till, any of the UFC fighters that you see do all the time, but they'll say it to you, <laughs> not having that yeah, tool track. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, and also if that if that if that modeling if modeling uh um that modeling uh statement is true, I need to see the receipts because I need to see I need to see the pictures. I would like to see the pictures. I feel like that would amuse me as well. And yeah, man, I'm here. I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> We're Let's all go, here. Go. I'm ready for this one as well. I'm feeling a lot better after having a couple of slips of ginger beer as well. So uh, if you haven't seen from the title, you've definitely heard me mention it just now as well. For one of our conversations uh, during the Ramadan month as well, that I really think will be something that Josh was going to bring a lot to the table. But I think all of us will, because we all kind of grew up in the same era. We all kind of watch football throughout the same time as well. We have some really fun football in memories from when we were younger as well. So without further ado, to our younger listeners, when I'm telling you, and I'm actually going to tell you, and I'm pretty sure the three other co-hosts today will be telling you as well. When we're talking about a footballer today, you're going to sit up and you're going to respect these footballers that we're talking about. And you're also going to be YouTubing them later on as well, because that is what pure football is about. You can have system of football for all you want, but one thing I love about AFCON, and I've said it to the guys as well, maybe not to traps, but I'll say it again now, is AFCON is, for me, just pure joy of football. You've seen so many people just run around, have fun, enjoy the game, have some flamboyant skills everywhere on the pitch, from left back, from centre defence and mid, with two guys on you and they'll still go past you as well. It's once again another reason as to why Ghana aren't doing very well 
and African Cup of Nations, but it's still fun to watch and it's still very enjoyable um, to see as well. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not biting, I'm not biting, I'm not, I'm not biting, I'm just listening. Don't worry, South Africa, South Africa are currently the dark horses right now for a 4-0 win against Namibia as well uh, yesterday, which is really fun to watch as well. But without further ado... Before we set our top 10 list off as well, we're going to do it the last time, like we did it last time. We're going to discuss these players and we're going to agree on our top 10 and then we will make our top 10. I think that's a really good way of doing it because yeah. we can discuss the players properly. When the listeners are listening back, they can listen to each player uh, properly as well. So by all means, without further ado, everyone, let's get into it. Top 10 UEFA Champions League Mavericks, Mavericks slash Showman. And Matthew, you're on the hot seat straight away because I'm throwing a name to you. Number 14, Mr. Vavavoom, Mr. Advertising Renault Clio. I'd go to the Enfield Renault dealership and see pictures of him randomly outside as well, which is crazy to see. But someone who epitomized what it was to be an Arsenal player in the late Highbury days as well. I am going to throw to you Thierry Henry in the Champions League. Describe to him, describe to everyone what Thierry Henry really meant to you as a Champions League player only. <laughs> First of all, before I get into that, I feel like it's a kind of setup because when well, you said it, it might be, it might be, but wait, all I'm wait, saying wait, is wait, wait, I'm I'm promoting say, Renault right now. That's all when I'm you saying. Said it, I saw Joshua smart and trapped just like <laughs> the space of gone, gone. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, you know what? Listen, um, I asked you in terms of Champions League. Obviously, we've never won it, innit? and I know you lot want to hear that. Look at it. Look at the smiles on their faces. Um, he could. You're so mean for this, Hamza. Um. But he has won it though. Thierry Henry has won it though. He has so, won it. He has won it. But obviously, it was a dream to see a, you know see him win it with us. But I feel like a lot of us have seen great performances from him in Champions League. You know, we look no further than I think with PSV when he left Van Bommel on the floor, absolutely destroyed them at Highbury. The main one being Bernabeu. You know, absolutely ripped them apart. And that was I think was that the Galactica era? Would we say? Because I think Graveson was in the midfield then, wasn't he? I think so. You can't really Jonathan can... Woodgate set it back as well. Crazy <laughs> yeah. Guys. But honestly, what he did that in that game, and you know, just at the, come on, run about, and at that time, going to no one gave us a chance. Absolutely, no one gave us a chance. We went there, we won one nil, and that was a season where I felt obviously we're going to win it. Unfortunately, in the final, he, you know, he might have been a bit unwell. I think because some of his finishing was a. Bit... How many finals was Thierry Henry unwell for for, for Arsenal? Just so nine. Was it nine? nine. It was nine. nine yeah, down. he felt ill the night before in every single one of those. And then that same summer as well, World Cup final as well, when he got knocked out within a minute. So yeah, yeah, I, won't, I, I won't lie. I won't lie. That Champions League final, when he missed them chances, I was one of the few that said, go. I was steaming. I was like, you can't miss them chances. We were at 10 men. The one where he, I think he deflected a Puyo and he volleyed it straight at uh, Victor Valde. And I was like, come on, man. And then obviously the next season, the money, 50 mil, whatever, we sold him for. And that did break my heart. But listen, You sold him for less than Darren Bent. When you went to Spurs, to Barcelona, he cost us a Champions League trophy. In my head, we won that. Yeah. But oh no, you're not deluded, Matt. Come on, accept it, accept it. You lost to Henrik Larsson, the superior no, because, European no, striker. You, you, you like don't understand the pain I went through with that game, and you know to go to school. Do you know how painful it was going to school the next day, losing a Champions League final? I got ruined. I got ruined. I acted like I was sick. I went home early. Like it was very, very painful. Um, but listen, great player, none, nonetheless. But yeah, he won his Champions League trophy at Barcelona, not at Arsenal. So, bit of a disappointment. Nah, I understand that completely. But Joshua, this is what I'm going to bring you in as well because I need to talk to you about how he was a maverick, an absolute showman at Arsenal. He was the main man when you're watching Arsenal Football Club to be in without being disrespectful. Disrespectful. I can't even speak because it was changing a bit. Disrespectful. <laughs> um, being a, a side character to Xavi, Iniesta, Thierry Henry, Samuel Leto, um, at this Barcelona team that looked absolutely fearsome under Fra Frank Rijkaard and then absolutely phenomenal under Pep Guardiola as well. So I think what we'll do, because he has won the Champions League at Barcelona, we'll talk more about his days at Arsenal as well. So from an opposition perspective, Joshua, talk to me about how Thierry Henry was put in fear into so many different teams across Europe coming out. Oh, Thierry Henry's one of the greatest strikers this continent seen comfortably. That's not even a question. I, I personally think he's the best Premier League player to ever play in, in the Premier League. Ronaldo. Uh, I know I know Ronaldo's people will say Ronaldo, but Henri at his height at Highbury was cash money. Let's be real. All the bit took oh my god, look at Trap's face. He's like, what's this United fan saying? But honestly, he was. 
but at the same time, it's, I've got I've got to prove him up to what he is because he is top quality, one of the best, Arsenal's greatest player. Silky could do everything. He learnt the game. His movement, very good finisher. Did it everywhere. I don't think he scored at Anfield though. I don't think he scored at Anfield. Um, I don't know if he scored, did he score at OT either. There is, I don't know if he scored. Nah, at I think I think in the league, I'm not. Sure. I think in the cup he did. Yeah, in the cup. Yeah, he uh, yeah, there's a few times where he didn't turn up in the big games. I think I FA Cup finals and that. I but that. in terms of his Premier League pedigree, he's second to none. But in the Champions League, it's because he was so good in the Premier League. I look at him and he's on my list. He's ninth. Because mm. other players performed better Facts. in their career. They might not have been a better footballer than Henri or he did in the Premier League. But when it came to Europe, it wasn't just only um, you know, what happened in Paris, but sometimes Arsenal need to be carried. Let's say that Wayne Bridge um game that we, we spoke about, he wasn't there. Oh. He you know, he didn't take it by the scruff of his neck, where maybe a Ronaldo or a Messi in Europe or as a Dan has. Mm-hmm. Um so I kind of feel like Henri, you know, when you like win a title, like a Jack Grealish for Man City, you know, perspective, he's been okay for City, but you know, he's kind of sat pad. I feel yeah, like yeah. when he won it, when he won it at Barca, it was kind of like, he didn't really do much to do in it. It was kind of like, oh yeah. And it was fitting that he won it against United because obviously United yeah. had won so many um, titles being at the time it was at Arsenal. But I don't, I, I think about Henri in the Champions League and I feel, why did he not hit? Why did he not ball out? Like, why did we not see it? Personally, I don't think he was top, top, top. Um, compared to all the other names that we'll list and talk about for sure. But yeah, in the Premier League, sensational. No one could get near him. And just on that point as well, Traps, there's a conversation I had previously as well, just off off camera as well with a couple of friends. And I was saying it's the same with Eden Hazard as well. Eden Hazard is an exceptional Premier League talent. But in the Champions League, him and Henri go from there, Premier League talent, to Champions League talent. Mm -hmm. For Chelsea and for Real Madrid, neither of them really struck gold um, in European football. Would you agree with that statement, Traps? Mm, yeah, I think I I don't obviously being be, be, being part of the Arsenal conglomerate. Yeah, you know how it goes when it, when 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 you step outside when you step outside of the places of Highbury and 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 the Emirates and you step onto foreign soil, man. It doesn't nine times out of ten it doesn't really go well. But mm. Henri, his his talent was undeniable. I mean, he had like yeah. I mean, in the Premier League, he he is one of the top top in Premier League but I just don't I don't know what it is I don't know why because it's a bit of a weird one for him in it because he's um he's, he's won the World Cup he's uh he's won he's won the Champions League obviously with with uh Barcelona but he, obviously but he spent most of his most of his years his, his, his prime years at Arsenal and couldn't quite do it so I don't know man but I just feel that I would I, I would I don't know I, I, don't, I would I have him in my top 10 in, in in players or in players of all time, yeah. But in the UCL, I mean, I don't know. It's very arguable because I, I just don't feel like he hit the height. Same as Eden, Eden Hazard as well. Yeah, he was the same. Um, but yeah, some people just don't have it in the Champions League. You know, it's UCL time. It's UCL time. Some people just ain't got it. You know what I mean? It's true. It's true. <laughs> the, the, that, the, the, lights, the lights just turn off for some people in the Champions League. <laughs> they, just, they just can't take it. It's like I look at United this year. It's mad, but it is what it is and it's life. Man. It is what it is, but remember who's got more Champions Leagues. <laughs> no, but it's nice to know my team have been it come March or February. It is. But it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's cool. all nah, it's all good, but it's a good Your conversation. Your keeper's coming back already. You know that, yeah? <laughs> uh, you, you've had, you see, you know what's funny? You, you've said that same sentence 19, con- no, 19 consecutive Traps, times. Allow me, allow 19 me. <laughs> consecutive times you've said that, yeah? And you, and you know what? It's, it's the shamelessness right now. It's the beard rubbing. It's the shamelessness right now. Like I'm not even. I don't even care. It's I'll a Jim it Shark apparel as well. Representing. It's crazy to see. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey! Stop, 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 stop. Let me. I should put tape on this. Actually, tape on it. Nah, it's no. okay. I'm pretty sure they like that free advertising as well, which ain't too bad as well. <laughs> um, but before we move on to another club, uh, Matthew, this is your chance to shine. So, if there is another Arsenal maverick or maestro wizard. Whatever type of showman you want to talk about before we move on to better and stronger clubs in in European football, respectively, is there anyone else you want to mention as an honourable mention? Maybe Meza Ozil, Dennis Burkamp. Do you think they deserve to be in the top ten list as UEFA Champions League's greatest showman? Meza, I would like, I would have loved to, but again, you know, you guys have said it already. We didn't really do much in the Champions League, and Meza had a great debut, and that, there was a couple again, Ludo Goretz game, the last goal, phenomenal finish. Um, Bergkamp, I'd love to as well, but the fact he didn't travel used to piss me off. <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> I can't have that in European football at all. Crazy. Doesn't you remember the games? I remember I look at the lineup and I'm like, are you not traveling again, bro? 
And then I think there was there's a game where I think it was Ajax, and he went by Eurostar. Yes, 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 yes. I don't even know if he won it, but yeah, exactly. So I think, yeah, other than Henri, I can't... The, the only other one, special actually, special mention, Cesc Fabregas for me. Um, and the reason why I say that, the, the, the game against Juve at Highbury, when Juve had that powerful, powerful team, and Fabregas was in there as a young 17, 16, 17-year-old. That was the I, Vieira versus Fabregas game, right? You remember, yeah, and absolutely bossed it. Scored as well. Thierry Henry scored that game. Um, and, yeah, he went from strength to strength from there. So, special mention for him. Um, but, yeah, other than them two, I don't, I, there's no one else I can really say, to be fair. Nah, it's all good. Nicely done there well, as well. well. No, no sender off then. No, Seagan. Not going, Gail, not going for Gail Wait, Clichy. wait, wait. Not, not going that, for Denilson that. or Andre Santos. Like you man didn't have Jemba Jemba, bro. Allow it, bro. Allow it. <laughs> Jemba Jemba. I wonder if Jemba Jemba actually scored a Champions League goal. That's going to be oh, crazy. I don't, I don't think he did. <laughs> I have to Google that. Maybe he scored against Panathinaikos or Fenerbahce or something. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to check that in a second. But now, nah, nicely done as well. And moving from Matthew's team at Arsenal to Joshua Traps and my team, Manchester United, before we get into um, our European friends across the continent, we are going to focus on Manchester United as well because this is where the, the fun begins, I would say, because Matthew, again, will be starting us off with his favourite Manchester United showman <laughs> maestro. We are going in this order, ladies and gentlemen. So it's going to go Matthew... Um, Joshua then try this guy it's gonna be fun it's gotta be fun come on we've got to switch up every now and then as well so Joshua um if you had to name one person and traps if you had to name one person as your greatest Manchester United showman just write it down or keep it to the side I don't want to see Matthew say it and on three we're all gonna say it at the same time so Matthew get ready because on three I'm gonna go one two three then you're gonna say it and then traps and Joshua will also say it on three as well so <clears throat> Matthew who is your favourite Manchester United Champions League showman for this draft, for this list, I should say? Who would you put into this one? One, two, three. Has to be Ronaldo. Has to be CR7. Cristiano's got to make the list. Joshua to... Traps, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mi Mr. Champions League, all-time top scorer of the Champions League. Has to be, yeah. Absolutely crazy wildfire of a footballer as well. He literally tormented Europe like he was he probably took, took over Europe better than Napoleon took over Europe <laughs> time as well. Absolutely crazy. But last week we did speak about a certain game in the Champions League as well, Matthew. So this was when Blue Kit Ronaldo did come to the Emirates and he had a wonderful game. He scored an unbelievable free kick that Clyde oh, Tosby, Joshua's friend, couldn't believe as well. And he's got an incredible counter-attack where Traps was speaking about last time in terms of how incredible that front three was. Apart, he sung Wayne Rooney and Cristiano Ronaldo as well. From an from a opposition perspective, Matthew, what was it like watching Cristiano Ronaldo in his younger days at Manchester United as a school kid when you were watching it, Matthew? What was it like for you? Do you know what? For me, it's such a it's a big thing because I remember his debut in Bolton and he was brought on and he had the spaghetti hair and the silver mercurials. And I remember thinking... Is he all that? Like, this guy from Sporting Lisbon. And you saw all the step overs, but there wasn't Number really seven end, as well. Number seven. But there wasn't really end product in that game. We just had the skills and he kind of got the crowd standing up. But then he just had this mad development when I was just like, wow. And there was that season, obviously, the Portsmouth goal, top bins, and then obviously against us. That that blue... I think you you guys had certain kits when you used to come and play us. And I used to sit there and go, I'm dreading it. Like, the one where you lot come and you beat us 4-2... And John O'Shea's will do this on my ground. Are you mad? Do yeah, this. black kit, black black kit United and blue black, kit United is dangerous United. And then I remember when I can't Viera stand this green and white one that we have now. It's Viera just embarrassing. Them off, yeah, and I went Vieira. No, no. Here we go. And honestly, Ronaldo that game is scored. And remember, we fell into the net, and it was all of this. Nah, don't do that on our turf. You know, scored but two at it. scored two at Highbury as well. Scored Loved two it. at Highbury. So listen, I give him his respect. He was a phenomenal player, and. I, oh, I do wonder where United would have been had he not have played for you guys. I do. I really, really do. Like, and that, that what, Josh, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I think Rooney would have like more, 70 more goals, probably. <laughs> Number nine, <laughs> like, Wayne Rooney would have been a menace. Absolutely. No, but you know <laughs> what? Probably probably let, you know, as much as you give Ronaldo credit, as, as you said, you guys had the perfect strike force for mm. every single game. When you had the games where you were going at it, it would be Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez. You want a little last minute winner? Chikorito, get on, man. Hurry up. Just get that last. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Like, and then Berber sort of come. I know Traps is loving this. Look at him just smug there. But 
you guys had the perfect strike force, and Ronaldo was an important part of that. Oh, I hate it, man. I hate Man United with a passion. Sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Keep it. It's, my... it's all that good. Hurt. It's all good. It's, it's, all, it's all fun and games Amza, here. No more, man. No more. The God. That's what that's what I'm getting out early for you, Matthew, because we've had your Arsenal talk. We've had our Man United talk coming up now, which might be a bit longer because Traps has got a few things to say. I know. Oh on this podcast as well. And then we'll get into the neutral zone as well for our listeners. Okay. So uh, for our listeners, you're not going to have to wait until Man United talk because we're into it now. And one of the most famous quotes about Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the greatest footballers Manchester United have ever seen, um, was George Best, rest in peace, said the former Northern Irishman who was a former number seven at Manchester United, who is in a statue of a trinity outside the East End at Manchester United, did say about Cristiano Ronaldo. There have been a few players described as the new George Best, but this is the first time it's been a compliment to me. And when George Best was saying that when he was live around 2005, I think he passed away in 2006. Um, Traps and Joshua, you can correct me if I'm wrong. That was crazy to see how young was... Cristiano Ronaldo had that talent, that aura about him so soon in Premier League football, in Champions League football as well. And Traps, if we go through it as well, he didn't score that often in his early days at Manchester United because he was still a tricky winger. He was full of flair, tenacity. He had so much unbalance about him going forward as well. So you don't know if he's going left, going right. If he's going to fall over his own shoe and lose the ball. If he's going to swish over to the other wing. What was it like when you were watching Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo, for yourself, Traps? I mean, when he was when he was younger, I remember them calling him the one-trick pony. Mm. Um and a lot of people were just like, Yeah, who's this fake Ronaldo, X, Y, Z and Z? He didn't score his um he didn't score his first Champions League goal till he was 24. I think, was it 24? It was against 20, Roma. It was against 20, 22. Roma. It was in, is that that 7 1 game or 7 0 yeah. game or something? When we fresh Roma, he took a long time. Big, Big up Michael Carrick. Yeah, respect to please. The only time Michael Ka- pa- Ka- the only time Michael Carrick played as a camp in that game mm. as well. Like crazy Ooh. scored two goals. Shout out Michael Carrick. Nicely done there, Matthew. Big yeah. up so, I mean, Ronaldo just, Ronaldo just had this, this. I don't know what happened, and he just. He just went away after you know it was all, after that World Cup, yeah. With with, with um with with Rooney, Rooney and and, yes. and him wanting to join Valencia, I don't know what Ferguson done to him, but he just came back, an evolved beast, and it was. It crazy, reminded man. me of sorry to interrupt. It reminded me of David Beckham after ninety eight when the whole yeah. country's going against David Beckham. So right, Ferguson was like, "Now nah, I'll help you," and David Beckham was on the top three Ballon d'Or list, so I think it should have been a lot higher for what he did for Man United. And Ronaldo was exactly the same. Every single stadium was booing Cristiano Ronaldo when he came back from the World Cup. And Rooney forgave him when he went back to Carrington as well. And Traps, even when you're looking at it, do you think that that also helped evolve the Ronaldo-Rooney partnership? Because I, I, think, I, think, I think the understanding that Rooney had and the way Rooney explained it was perfect. When he said, uh, he said, look, at the, at the end of the day, it, what, what, what happened was left on the field. Like when we, when, when we come off the field, but when we came home, it was it, the hatchet was buried because I think that Rooney, Rooney just realised that, listen, what we've got here is something special. Because don't you have to remember, Rooney said that he went to train at Everton mm. and on his first day, he looked at everyone, he said, they're all shit. So he knew, R- 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 Rooney knew that this guy was something special, man. So Pure disrespect I think that it was, and honesty. It was, it was for the greater good. I mean, I don't think they'll ever be great, the best of friends, because they never really was. But in terms of output and, and partnerships, and when they added Tevez, it's that like when they added Tevez to it, it's like when you know when the Power Rangers get together and they make that big thing. What's it called? <laughs> Megatron. Is it Megatron? It was like Megatron of the. Is it Zordon or, 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 or something? It's that like really big robot. It's crazy. Yeah, something. Cool. When they get, yeah, when they make that 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 uh the, the big robot thing, that was like what this, that's what the Strike Force was when they added Tevez to it as well. So, I mean, Ronaldo's ability was crazy. He's like he could just decide games for fun, like, like all right, cool. The game's not going well, so you know what? I'll just score a free kick. Or do you know what? This is this is a low block. I'm just gonna run for everyone and shoot and score. Or do you know what? Just put, put one, stick one into the mixer, man. I jump six feet in the air and and, and head it into the goal. He's like he was just unplayable. I mean, the game against Porto, that was one of my favorite ones because I remember that game was on a knife edge and it was like it was two two, and it was like we need to like we need to we had to we had to go there and we had to we had to win. And it's literally for you to be for, for that kind of game to go there and be like. We need, we need to win for him to just pull that shot out. I can't, how many yards was it? 50, 60 yards or something? Nice. Crazy. For him to just pull crazy. that out in a game that you must win, in a game that you, you, it's just, that's how you knew that. That's when you, that's when you knew he was him. Do you know what I mean? That was it. He was him. So Against yeah, his was, former he, rivals as well, being a Sporting Lisbon yeah. Academy player as well. Crazy. Yeah. So it's like doing yeah, that against I'm, Liverpool, like for as a Man United player, for people who don't understand, but it's pure context in terms of he did that as 
former rivals and you shush the crowd as well. Get all the all the players going up to him and just there, just standing there like a menace that he was as a footballer. But like Trap said, he was him in that moment, and that's when he actually really was Mr. Champions. You know, another thing as well, yeah. Another thing that I liked about Ronaldo was is that the more you hated him, is the is the worse he got. Is like the more <laughs> is like the more you the more you hated him, is the more he was going to inflict pain. He's still doing it now in the Saudi yeah. league as well. Like, I'm still going to be playing for Portugal at the Euros. I'm still here. You know what? Sorry, just just quickly what Trap just said. Yeah, as soon as you said that, that reminds me. Was it Atletico um, that Juve played? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. When yeah. they they were giving him this, and he walked past them as, as if to say, hmm, "All right, smoke them." Or was it hat trick? Was it hat trick next game? Yeah, hat trick in the return. Bro, leg. like his mentality was different. He like still like is. Trapp said, yeah, exactly. It's incredible. And the fact he's still going and banging in goals, phenomenal player, man. Phenomenal player. Someone who loves banging in goals at Power League and football every week is Joshua Adudonka. And Joshua, <laughs> this is where I get to talk to you because you're of the opinion that um, Cristiano Ronaldo was better at Real Madrid and obviously he wasn't with all the goals that he scored. Five Champions League titles for Cristiano Ronaldo, 140, game, uh, 140 goals in 183 games, 70 goals in one season. I think it was mm. the 2014 season when they... When he first won it at Real Madrid as well, and three hat tricks in one campaign. Zinedine, Zinedine Zidane once said about Cristiano Ronaldo: "When you play with Ronaldo on your team, you're already one 0 up." So, Joshua, I want to talk to you a bit more about how Zinedine Zidane, Cristiano Ronaldo, Carlo Ancelotti, Cristiano Ronaldo was the biggest superstar, missed the Champions League overhead kick against Juventus, arguably one of the greatest ever goals in Champions League history. Talk to me a bit about when Ronaldo, you could say, evolved and grew into the main man. Um, in world football and especially in European football for Champions League season in, season out. What was that like for you, Joshua, seeing one of the greatest showmen in football history do his thing every single season? I think when he left United, it was kind of like, he'll, he'll win he'll win a Liga, he'll win the Champions League at Madrid because there had been a wait since Hamden Park for Real Madrid. But I never imagined, I don't think anybody did, that he would break Raul's record at the club. And what Messi and Ronaldo were doing in, Europe, in the Champions League and in goals, you think at United, he was a left winger went to Madrid and became a number nine and became one of the best number nines we've seen. The finishes in the box, in the box, great goals outside the box, airily one of the best to play the game. You think about the mm. headed goals he scored, he, that bicycle kick against, um, it was against Juventus, wasn't it? Yeah. It was against Juventus. Um, yeah. All the great goals he scored and then to win as well, to always be that guy. I, I said, there's a lot of things about footballers who are good, but they not necessarily choke, but they don't turn up on the big big stage. And Ronaldo used to be mm-hmm. told that he wouldn't turn up. Like 2009 Roma, as United fans, in certain Rome, we lost to Barcelona. We know that he overplayed in his last game for United before he returned. It was like, you know, we were trying to take on Messi. It was frustration. You know, even in, against Arsenal in 2005, lost in penalties. Ronaldo wasn't there. There was that question mark over that. And he blew that away. 2007 Absolutely. FA Cup final against Jose Chelsea, against Paolo Ferreira on the wing as well. He just yeah, never yeah. really got away with it, really. But when he went to Madrid and when they started to do the free peats, he started to get the goals. It was all through Ronnie. It became an obsession. It was everybody's like, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, what's he going to do? It just became like he's always going to score. Even now, as you guys are saying, he's just, uh, for me, his, his character kind of, and who he's played for, teams like Madrid and Man United, not the, the most loved unless you support them. So they're clowns people's judgment. And Messi is kind of the darling to, to lean for. And I, I look at Messi because I always think when you watch Messi play, He's the best to play the game. The fact that we, we've had a conversation for this long is the ultimate compliment you can give to Ronaldo. I think we, not doing the, the third, the third, I think, appreciate both, but you can have your preferences. But the fact we have that dialogue suggests yeah. Ronaldo's doing something well because there is a difference in terms of natural play. He's had to evolve his game from a right winger, left winger to a forward, and not only just evolve to survive, but to be the best. You know, he's been playing with Karim Benzema. That's why he moved to the right-hand side or left-hand side. It's only the elite has moved him to the side. Look at the international goals he scored. The records he'll finish. Yes, he might not have won the World Cup. Yes, he, you're talking about not winning the greatest prize of all time. To throw at him. He's just the most incom- accomplished European footballer we've seen in these shores, man. I, just, I think... I'm, I'm not even his biggest fan in terms of who he is. I, he, he annoys me when it comes to what he, the way he treats Man United. It annoyed me, I'll be honest. I'm a Rooney boy, so probably why. He annoyed me when he, he was a slave to United. I just think like, but he's amazing, amazing footballer. And I also think he doesn't get the respect he deserves because people don't like him. And it's easy just to throw Messi in his face, especially after Qatar. 
But come on, if you love football, man, you just have to take a step back. I don't like Mo Salah, but I know he's a phenomenal footballer. You've got to take a step back and just say, wow. Because when he retires, his career, look what you're talking about. Think about that Highbury game. Back to a brace at Highbury at that age. Came to, you know, you know the goals him and Rooney were doing, damage he was doing. Uh, like, almost 20 years ago. Before he's even kicked the ball in El Clasico's and done all these things for Juventus and, and Real Madrid. You know, even when he came back to United and it was a bit dodgy, bagging a hatch against Spurs, scoring in that, you know, adding to 100 goals at the Emirates. Nah, he, he is Mr. Champions League. And, you know, just because people have uncomfortable feelings about him, he's 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 top two, man. He might not be two. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see for that one later. But great analogy and great conversation about Cristiano Ronaldo. And, and it's only natural, Matthew, that we then move to his, his greatest competitor, Lionel Messi. Um, Barcelona, not really going to talk about his PSG career. I don't really think Traps or Joshua have anything more to say about his time at PSG in a glowing light, I would say. But Matthew, straight on to Lionel Messi after talking so fantastically well about Cristiano Ronaldo as well. And when you're looking at how Lionel Messi has done so well for Barcelona, how the system was working so well under Pep Guardiola, when they got rid of Ronaldinho, they got rid of Samuel Eto'o um, just to accommodate Lionel Messi. That's when you know you're seeing greatness appear season in, season out. And he's done it to every single European club that I can think of as well. Celtic, Liverpool included as well. Crazy what he could do in all of these European away games. Shakhtar Donetsk, he could do it in the snow. He could do it at random times in Turkey as well. And he did it fantastically well. But Matthew, one thing I want to get onto in terms of Lionel Messi is the fact that Four European, four, yeah, four European titles, I'd say, Champions Leagues, 129 goals in 163 games as well. Realistically speaking, I think he still should have stayed in Europe, but I think he wanted to leave Europe just to have a, a more relaxing time at Inter Miami as well and potentially go forward as well. But so much of what he did was gracious, victorious as well. And it was all through the joy of watching Lionel Messi play. An incredible showman. One of my favourite moments personally um, was Riz... It's, it's a game against Bayern Leverkusen. It's not his biggest moment in the Champions League, but I'm pretty sure it's with five goals in a game at home mm. at the new Camp against Bayern Leverkusen, which is absolutely incredible. Just talk to the listeners and talk to us a bit more about how Lionel Messi, he could do it on, just like with Cristiano Ronaldo, he could do it in any year, in any position, in any country, in any game, really, minus one or two as well in, in his latter years. But how was it seeing Lionel Messi go from being just that tricky wing on the right-hand side to being that false number nine, redefining a position, um, at Barcelona and under Pep Guardiola. Do you know it is with I think Joshua said again, like with him and Ronaldo, you you just whoever you prefer, in it. It's not for me, it's not about who's better than whoever. Just enjoy both. And I feel with Messi, what I find incredible, where he was so small, he never really got barged off the ball. Like he he kind of use it as like a barrier. Like like, you know, not even that bumper cards. You know what you bump bump the card, a car gone, you bump into him, he's gone with the ball, not make you and he was doing it to the greatest players. And you could make a plan around, you know, stopping him. He just couldn't. What he did to um, Jerome Boateng, Jerome mm. Boateng at the time was one of the better defenders. And he dinked one of the greatest goalkeepers as well, like no one's business, you know. Um, smashed my team many a time. Um, I'm sure you lot have been enjoying hearing that part uh, at the new camp. You can I talk a bit more that. if you want. I don't mind at all. No, no, we're not going to get into that one too deeply because, uh, like uh, Traps alluded to there, uh, 19 time Champions League, whatever. Anyway, we ain't won it. Um, <laughs> but, you yeah, know, honestly, he's absolutely incredible. For me, I enjoyed watching him more than Ronaldo, as much as I love Ronaldo. There's things uh, Messi did. Bilbao goal. We'll go to Bilbao goal. And the biggest moment for me was the goal against something that was. Was, no, he was uh, Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. And he just 2011 held... semi-final. Mate, doing that, yeah. just Oh, the league cold. game. is the league game you're talking about. Yeah, last Cold, minute. cold, you know what I mean? And mm. yeah, he, I, there's so many words I can go I can go on about him. Like Joshua was saying, when you talk about Ronaldo going on and on, we can be here for ages talking about Lionel Messi. And Champions League, the time where they, they just, I think they use it as fuel against each other. Mm. Messi just... was scored. Messi was scored two, and I can imagine Ronaldo at home sitting in the family going, oh, me tomorrow, yeah, all right, cool. Hat-trick. And it was, oh, let's just let's just appreciate what we had, because when they're both gone, we're all going to sit there and go, what a time that was, you know? Because who do the, the younger generation don't have this now? Like, yeah. there's nothing, you know what I mean? So let's just appreciate what we had. And as you can tell, I'm so passionate about him. I wish he was an Arsenal player. I used to dream about him being there one day. 
football Just, manager. Uh, football manager, I'd edit this thing and get him on the Arsenal team, put him up top. Not even uh, paying him, not even paying him, just like changing the system. Uh, you don't need money, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was the manager. I made sure it was there, but we still didn't win the Champions League. Must have been the Arsenal jeans, man. Must have been. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, incredible, incredible player. My For me, my favourite player, not my GOAT, but yeah. One of my favourites. Nice to hear that as well. And Trap's getting onto it as well. I mean, Matthew just alluded to there. For some people, they've never seen the full rivalry or they've they've accepted it late. Like I was discussing, I was going to my brother's house and my cousin was coming with me. He's like 12, 13 at the time. He's trying to debate me about Ronaldo versus Messi. And I'm like, you know, you've only been alive for like 12 years, right? You've not actually watched <laughs> football for that long. And your main reference point was... 2017, 2018, when Ronaldo won the Champions League and then Messi ended up getting to the semi-final against Liverpool as well, respectively. Would you say, Traps, that this is one of the greatest sporting rivalries, if not the greatest sporting rivalry of all time between two individuals from Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi and how that inspired football to be probably its greatest era um, that, we've set, that we've seen and appreciated from 2007 after when Kaká won the Ballon d'Or to around 2023, where we're at now and still going on to this day? Yeah, I think I think it's it's probably it probably is one of the, it probably is the greatest rivalry. I mean, when when we talk about rivalry, there's, there's no it's not it's not a personal thing. It's just business, business. between you and them. Yeah, it's just business only. I mean, the the only one I can think of that was and it was nowhere near the level that obviously me growing up was 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 obviously Van Nistelrooy Henri. That was that was that was a good rivalry, but mm. this was another level. This was on all. This was this was this was on. All levels, any cup, any place, any time, it is, yeah, it, we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe for this. this. This was like watching, like, two heavyweights go at it for, like, 20 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just non-stop <laughs> with that for, for 20 years. Yeah, punch for punch. Yeah, no one going down. Someone might drop to a <laughs> knee, but they get straight back up. It was it was crazy, man. It was crazy. But for me, I just think... I do feel like... But yeah, I do feel like Messi is... um. He is so like yeah like 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 Matthew said that like some people would think he's, he's the goat or whatever but realistically there's no there's so many different points between both of them that you can't there's no way to gauge it do you know what I mean like because for me obviously when for me Ronaldo is the goat whether, whether, even though he has done some dubious things and there's certain things I don't really agree with what he's done however like he's done it in so many different countries however Messi has done it on every level so you know what I mean so. It, not to say Ronaldo hasn't, but it's just you, how do you split the two? Do you know what I mean? You, I don't think you can. I think Messi, Messi was a gift. Yeah, he he he, he was just a natural born. This was his destiny from day one. He didn't he didn't have to work hard. Well, I wouldn't say he didn't have to work hard, but hormone injections. It, it, it just seems like it was just meant to be for Messi. Do you know what I mean? Anything he could literally do anything. But yeah, I just think that um, it was it, that is probably that probably goes down as probably the best rivalry we've ever seen or of all time that we'll ever see, to be honest. Uh, Joshua, just to finalise on Lionel Messi as well, who may be in your alleged top two as well, maybe not number two at the end of this podcast as well, Joshua. Can you just tell us a bit more about how Barcelona flourished and then they've just dropped the fallen from grace since Lionel Messi has left because there will never be a suitable Lionel Messi replacement. We've seen it with Ronaldinho when he said to Kobe Bryant, watch out for Lionel Messi because he's going to be even greater than I am. We've seen it before Ronaldinho when they had Rivaldo there as well. You had Raquel May who was in and out of the team. You've had some amazing players at Barcelona. And even when you look at someone like Ansu Fati, who annoyingly took the number 10 shirt, his career went downhill so badly that he ended up at Brighton on loan um, as well. But realistically speaking though, Joshua, will there ever be a replacement for Lionel Messi for Barcelona? Or Zach, would you then say that's their greatest era in football due to the fact that Lionel Messi was simply playing at their football club and he brought so many good memories to Barcelona in the Champions League? 100%. You have to look at their European pedigree before, 2000, before 2006. They won that Champions League. It was such a long wait. They had no European Cups before. I mean, it was only against Arsenal with 10 men. So, I mean, <laughs> the cat was out of the bag after that 10 men. I mean, uh, it was, it, it, I mean, it's similar to Manchester United, isn't it? After Ferguson, you kind of knew once Ferguson retired, that United would be the force to come as they've been. And, and with Barcelona, I think it's even, you, you feel it immediately in terms of the whole play through Messi. You know, he, he'd play up front, he'd play behind. He had amazing players around him as well, Javi Viesta. He had obviously MSN, he got the best out of Neymar at times. Suarez, amazing finisher. 
Um, so it's no surprise to see that Barcelona are struggling. There's no surprise without Messi. I mean, what he was doing there, when he when he played at Camp Nou and the lights are on, I don't think there's another better footballer that we've all seen, if I'm being honest with you. You can throw everything you want at him and you can throw all that. He's not even my goat, but I think when you're going to play Barcelona between that, what, 2007, 2015, 2014 era, you, you know, who, who, who's winning there? That's why that mm. Chelsea Barcelona game was such a big thing when we spoke about it. And, you know, with Ramirez and Torres, because he was outstanding. Messi was just unplayable. You can't do anything. You can put anybody on him. Same it with the Celtic game against uh, Barcelona. At, yeah. At Celtic Park as well. He just, Brian you can't. Barcelona were incredible. And, and, and he turned up in a big moment as well. El Clasico goals. Remember the 2011, you, you alluded to the 2011 one. And it was like, even that's when the debate was still going on. Not debate, but I think Messi still had question marks. It was kind of like, he needs to come Prem. Everybody like, he needs to come Prem. Like, he needs to come to the Premier League. We don't know what he's on. Like, we need to see him. In the... And then it's just, he picked the ball up and he's putting his amazing run in the burnabout. And for me, I just love when big players turn up in the big moments because I don't got time for the, if you've got a talent, show it. Let's score goals. Let's make those moments. And, you know, Messi did many of that in El Clasico. Ruined my side. I mean, I've never seen him score a header other than Rome in 2009. Mm-hmm. Smashed, <laughs> smashed one in at Wembley, um, and then yeah, he got what he wanted in in Qatar twenty twenty two. You know, he got he, he got he got over the line with the World Cup, which look, for for many people that's the cement of the of the argument what he is. But realistically, like Prep said, there there's too much man for both. There's too much on his side. There's too much of Ronaldo. You just have to enjoy them. Even when Matt was talking about it, I was thinking about those days where Arsenal used to get battered <laughs> against <laughs> against Barcelona. Not even on like a distance, but like it's. What 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 are we watching now in football? Honestly, what are we watching now? Like even like Trap said, they're going toe for toe, bang. Who's going bang for bang? We're not seeing that every week. We're looking at if Man City are going to win something again. It's it is. I think you're already seeing the impact of what we had, and I've, I'm missing it already. Although I'm not the biggest fan of both of them individually in terms of who they are, but I, you want to watch Barcelona. I don't really care about Barcelona anymore. I don't really. Yeah, I watch Real Madrid because Vinny's there and Jude's there. I don't. I don't give a toss about Barcelona. All due respect. Mm. <laughs> But I don't, but I would have, if Messi's there and the players were there, you want to tune into those types. There isn't that, that, that factor anymore. There isn't that excitement. Um, yeah, one off, absolutely one off, one off. I mean, you can see it as well in terms of how La Liga's viewership has gone downhill since Ronaldo left in 2018 and when Messi left as well, went even further down because there's no star appeal anymore for La Liga. And that's why, annoyingly, we said it on, we said it recently as well, whenever there's racial abuse happening in, in Spain, that's one of their biggest highlights, unfortunately, because it shows how bad of a narrative it is that racial abuse is happening more often in Spain and in Italy, that actually good football is happening. And besides Jude Bellingham shining what he is now, not really many big stories are happening besides the Girona, um, Girona form that they've got as well, and Isco coming back into form. But that's just something that I like to see Isco back into form at Real Betis. But Lionel Messi definitely makes it into our top ten list, and we'll decide that later on as well. Oh, traps! I've got a player for you that you will be enjoying talking about. But obviously, the order is Matthew starting off first because we have to make sure he knows football as well. Um, Matthew, go ahead, my friend. We are going... Actually, no, we are going to stay. You did play in Italy, but we're staying in Spain. We're staying in Barcelona. We're going for Ronaldinho. Come on, Matthew. Talk to me about back in the day when you used to wear a headband and you never had the hair of Ronaldinho, but you wore it because Ronaldinho wore a headband. And I need to hear all about it because Ronaldinho is someone who... I've said on this podcast before, I'm still scarred by that 2002 goal against England in the World Cup. So that's still giving me PTSD. Uh, how he lobbed David Seaman and I've never really been able to appreciate or enjoy him as much um, since then as well but he was absolutely incredible he also didn't turn up for Barcelona in that Champions League final um, mm-hmm. against Arsenal as well respectively because again Abu, it, Abu, he had him unlocked he wasn't ready for that he didn't want it he didn't it, want it with Abu, man. The, the Ivorian nightmare was crazy against Ronaldinho he just couldn't do it as well so he had to wait for the goat Henrik Larsson to come back off the bench and actually help them win the game which is crazy mm-hmm. to see but Ronaldinho's one of my favorite moments of Ronaldinho is when he did that shimmy with his with his ankle with his boot against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. I believe they lost that tie overall, but he still silenced Stamford Bridge and he silenced people watching it at home as well, which is absolutely incredible. And that was a crazy kit that Barcelona had at the same time. But that's what I'm talking about in terms of the greatest showman that the Champions League have ever seen. When he's bringing the flicks, the tricks, the joy, the fun into football. Even nowadays, when you're watching football, there's not much fun. No one's trying to 360 roulette. No one's trying to flip flap. No one's trying to rabona as much as they should do in football because they get told off and they get criticized in the media by people who could never do it. 
at that point of view. What could Chris Sutton do in terms of flair? Not much. What could Robbie Savage do in terms of flair? Not much. He, David Dunn failed when he tried to do that Rabona for Birmingham City. And now you're seeing it. <laughs> with, you're seeing it all the time now in media. They're like, oh, he should stop doing these step overs and just cross the ball in. Where's the fun in that? And someone who I'm, like Josh, Yon... I'm like Joshua's countryman step overs, Danny Welbeck. You know, remember them ones, bro? Man, <laughs> he played, for, he played for your team as well. Yeah, so he played for you, man. Like, love it. Like, love it. He did it. He did it. He did it in your title. That guy your... Welbs. That guy Welbs. That guy yeah, Welbs. He did, he did step overs and he tried to chip Manuel Neuer, prime Manuel Neuer, in the first five minutes of a Champions League quarterfinal. <laughs> one of my most infuriating moments as a fan at Old Trafford. But um, yeah, by all means, before we get into Ronaldinho. I need everyone to kind of think about their favourite moment of Ronaldinho because everyone will get asked that question. And by all means, Matthew, fire away, my friend. Talk to the audience and myself about how Ronaldinho was the ultimate fun footballer to watch, how he brought so much joy to people across the world. And he still does by people having him as the ultimate YouTube footballer for people who never got to see and appreciate him um, as well. You know what? Um, that era of Ronaldinho, when it's at the peak, you had your Rivaldo's, you had all these other players. So... Everyone had different players they like, but we you just had one player, yeah, just the Rivaldos and that. No, yeah. Rivaldo. You had um, Denilson. I love Denilson anyway. I'm mm. a big Denilson guy. Them step. That's where I saw step was, was for the first time. Like I love Hidera Betis. He was the man. See, Matt knows ball hands, so don't test me. Um, he wasn't very good at Betis, by the way. He was awful. He's there but he still did the step overs, though. Still did the step overs. But yeah, still did the step overs. And you know what it was with him. He. Again, he was one that you could plan for, but you just couldn't stop him. Uh, was it Real Madrid when he had that game? I can't remember who the defender was. He gave him a little shimmy and flicked over him like no one's missed. It might have been Sergio Aguero? Ramos. I think it was Ramos at Bernabeu. Young like, Ramos. He scored, remember he scored that goal where he kind of got to that position. He kind of curled it in. I think it was Bernabeu. It was there when they won. Was it 5-0 or 4 I might be wrong. Was it 5-0? I know what Some you're talking about. I know it was a game when they trounced yeah. him at the Bernabeu and he got a standing yeah, ovation. Yeah, that one, they trounced them. But like you, my favourite goal was that one at Stamford Bridge. Because let's not forget, that was the Chelsea that were not conceding goals. That was Peter Cech at his That, that was 14 in a season in the league. You, you see what I'm saying? That was prime Peter Cech. And what I loved about, and Joshua, you being a commentator, you would see, like, they scored a goal. And all you heard was the net. And even the commentator didn't know what to say for a second. It was like, what? And he's Whoa. running off. And it, yeah, and everyone's like, wow. And yeah, he was just that guy. He was an absolute great player. One of my favourite Brazilian players, I don't put him as high in that list because I like players that play over a long period of time and like Ronaldo's, the Messi's and stuff like that. But he, for the period of time where he was at the top of his game, phenomenal player. Absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, my favourite goal was that one, the one against Chelsea. Perhaps would you say that with Ronaldinho, how he burned for a shorter time than a lot of these other greatest players, would you still consider him one of the greatest players to play Champions League football, especially with what he brought season in, season out to Barcelona, to PSG even as well, before he was playing at Barcelona, and to AC Milan, because that was the first time Man United actually got to play against Ronaldinho back in 2010, um, when Ronaldinho had left Barcelona because Barcelona were evolving. And AC Milan had to like look to replace Kaká, I believe, as well, because he went yeah. to Real Madrid. So Ronaldinho 80 was a big culture movement as well in, in Italy at the time as well. And we saw him score against Manchester United with a defence. It was good that game. He was very good in that game. He was pretty good in that game. I mean, I remember, I remember the stories coming out. Well, this is what I read. I think it's, did I read it in a book? Was it a documentary I heard? Match magazine. Um, four four two. Huh? Is it four four I mean, two? I can't remember. Is it Ferguson talking about him trying to him trying to get uh, Ronaldinho end up with Ronaldo mm. instead? Um, but they could have they could have had Ronaldinho at Manchester United. That would have been crazy hours. Ronaldinho, to be fair. Ronaldinho, for me, people say, "Oh, he he he, he didn't last long, or he, he wasn't as thing." But from I just think that Ronaldinho was one of the few players that you know did not train, that you know <laughs> did not did not give uh, did, was not interested in the technical side of football. He just wanted to go and no play. gym work, no gym yeah, work, no diet. gym work, no nothing. He looked so scrawny, but he was so strong. Yeah, strong as an ox, he was. Bounce off any defender. Just, he, he he just he was just a footballer through and through. He had all the skills, the end product. He had the bravado to go and win games, pull things out. And, and not only that, yeah, the way he he took he took Messi in and nurtured him and looked after him in the beginning, even though Pep wasn't having none of it by the end of it. But mm. but Ronaldo, Ronaldinho for me goes down a legend. If he took it seriously, he would his numbers would be phenomenal because people can't forget 
I remember I remember getting into trouble at school, yeah, at secondary school, so much for going on that PSG website and watching watching Ronaldinho's goals in IT. Oh. Yeah. He scored some phenomenal goals, yeah. Either at Gremio, at, at PSG, then Brazil. obviously Brazil as well. So yeah, I mean, I don't think Ronaldo I mean, Ronaldo, sorry, Ronaldinho leaving the game now, I don't think that people can discredit because yeah, I thought you remember he won a lot in his in his short space of time. Mm, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So for me, Ronaldinho will definitely go down as one of the greatest. He wasn't, he wasn't, he was when it comes to focusing and, and being a footballer, no, but Ronaldinho as an entertainer and a, and, and an elite an elite footballer, hundred percent. Honestly, with with Ronaldinho as well, like people still pay to go watch him play in these charity games, the soccer aid ones, <laughs> the ones that he does in Miami. And just like Trap said, he won a lot in his short time as well, just to read out a few. Um, the feats that he got. He was a Ballon d'Or winner in 2005. He was voted the best player in Europe in 2006. He was a, to um, he was a World Cup winner in 2002 for Brazil. Copa America winner in 1999. Champions League winner, of course, against 10 men Arsenal. Although it was Henrik Larsson that started the show once again. And obviously he did win the Serie A, the Scudetto with AC Milan in 2011, which is great to see. Among a smothering, a smither and other of his uh, trophies that we had as well. But Joshua, this is where I get to bring you in as well, because Ronaldinho being one of the greatest entertainers that football has ever seen as well. Is this now the worrying thing in football that we're not seeing more of these players coming through? We're not seeing more of these showmen coming through because there was a time recently, as Traps kind of said that, um, he doesn't get the kind of credit he deserves now because there was a time when Gabriel Jesus scored, I think, 19 or 20 goals. Gabriel Jesus scored 19 goals in the Champions League and the narrative on social media was Gabriel Jesus has now scored more goals in the Champions League than Ronaldinho. But it doesn't make him better than Ronaldinho, does it, Josh? I mean, come on now. No, no goals. way. Yeah, but this is, this is how the narrative is now. It's all about goals. It's all about assists. It's all about stats because that's what people want. People want to use it for their arguments. But when you're talking about the eye test, when you're looking at someone like Antony, you're looking at someone like Rafinha, you're looking at someone like Vinicius Jr. as well, they all pass the eye test or they all don't pass the eye test as well. But they need to bring something special. Out of the three, Vinicius Jr. is the closest thing I can think from Brazil that brings something special. Gabriel Martinelli, Matthew may agree or disagree. He doesn't bring anything special, but he brings no. a lot to the team. He brings a lot to the team, but he doesn't bring anything special. And that's what's worrying about the future of Brazil. And to rewind it back again for Joshua as well. Where are we going to see the future of football going forward? Because we aren't going to see any more Ronaldinho's. We aren't going to see any more people who is going to bring a lot more joy back into the game. How does football bring joy, flair, passion, and aggression back into the game compared to what we're seeing now with um, stats football, merchant football as well. Crazy to see what's happening now, Joshua. I was having this conversation with my boys over the weekend and I, I, I turned to Pep Guardiola, not as a criticism, but in terms of his success at that Barcelona team in 2009 and everybody, you know, all the academy started to play, you know, oh, we, you know, it's all about passing five times before you score. The drills became very technical. technical. If you look at someone like Phil Foden, England haven't really produced a, a lack of a, a Phil Foden. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing a lot of those types of players. Um, there's no freedom in the game. There's no freedom. You can't express yourself. You can't do anything. And the players can't afford to be flamboyant or have any type of flair. Or they're not going to make it. They're going to get hooked. They're going to be like, bye-bye. You know, all the good, all the the even all the good youngsters we've seen at Haaland, he's a robot. He's just there to put the ball in the net. Very good finisher, but he's not going to take you on. He's not going to, you know, go around a defender, have a step over here, win you a penalty. If you if you win a penalty, you get accused of being a diver, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you look at someone like Doku, who's kind of exciting, he's nowhere near half the players back in the day. Ronaldinho was playing as a as a normal winger, as in, in terms of entertainment. Right now, he's an exciting winger for Manchester City. And Doku throwback. couldn't lace JJ Koch's boots. Let him yeah, no. That's why I was a big fan of Mane because Mane was a proper throwback of that era of Premier League. Where mm. he'll get a goal, he'll get some nice goals, he'll take a little flick on. You know, it, it was always sort of type. It wasn't going to just slot the ball past the goalkeeper. It was kind of let me beat you, and let me make let me make it sexy. You know, no one wants to make it sexy no more. Everybody just wants to pull the you know pull the ball back from the byline and and hammer it in. And that seems to be the the, the, the prototype goal. Um, but Ronaldinho, he's yeah, he's yeah, he's he's. The Fla Mr. Flair, man, he's the maverick, he's the showman, he's definition. Because he won, you know, I keep talking about my underlying theme about players perform and do it get done on the grand stage. 
you listed everything that he's won. And that's why I love it. You, you could be great and not win anything, which is not your fault, but if you're playing for the big clubs, I want you to turn up. But he turned up his style. There's nothing more you can really say about Ronaldinho, to be honest. And that, that Chelsea goal is the one that sticks to my mind. You know, the commentary from there for Kyle Tuesday was top notch, but it was just a shock. Like, what, what, how, where, how? Like, what do you do it? Like, because it's how is the ball gone from there into the corner? Like, it's not even like into the, you don't see it like that. Even, even like the joy in his celebration, like, he played with that arrogance, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hard. I'm going to rip you today and I'm going <laughs> to smile about it. I love that. You don't see footballers even smile like that anymore because they're probably going to be told off in, in social media or this or that. But, yeah, Ronaldinho was a nice, nice, nice Brazilian. Brazilian. If I was a Brazilian, Jesus, I'd, uh, I'd probably fall off, man, because the fall off in football generally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brendan's midfield as well. Crazy to think about. Richarlison up front, Anthony on the right wing. Crazy hours for Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Argentina Argentina went to the Copa America last time out as well, beating them on penalties. To be Crazy fair, though, they have got they have got they, they they have got some new some up and up and coming players. They've got that Savio. They've got um Endrick as well. Endrick, mm. brilliant. Right. Andrew, I'd love to yeah, see more yeah. of him. I need to see yeah, more of Andrew. Right. Hopefully, he'll be the he'll be the one that actually resurges Brazilian football. I hope him and Victor Roque as well, the new Barcelona strike as well, can do it properly with Vinicius Jr. Because Neymar, he was a dying ember in that Brazilian World Cup squad, and when he got injured, it was really, really annoying. I have to see that he's out of football for the year as well. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Ronaldinho makes it into our list. And I've got a question for all of you now. If you have to think of one Champions League goal solo in your mind, what goal is it? That what goal is it that comes to mind? Matthew, go ahead. Oh, one Champions League. Oh my God! Uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. Zidane has to be traps. Pulls goals. Pulls goals. Joshua, Rooney against Milan, 90th minute, past Dida near post. Love that. Love it. Great goals all around as well. But it was Matthew that we go going to now, and it was <laughs> the player that Matthew did mention: Zidane versus Bayern Leverkusen, because oh, Zidane God. again. Absolute showman of a footballer when you're watching him play, when you got to appreciate him in his natural habitat on the football pitch. And he was unbelievable in that campaign to win the Champions League and to win at Hampden Park against a young and up and coming Bayern Leverkusen side, a young Berbatov, a young Michael Balak, a young Lucio as well, all in that team. It was crazy to see how Zinedine Zidane with a young Ike Casillas beside him as well. Um, in goal it was absolutely incredible. And Zinedine Zidane has to make the list for me as well because he is someone who. Again, he was an amazing coach for Real Madrid, winning three Champions Leagues in a row. But as a footballer, when you're looking at Zinedine Zidane, I mean, Franco Baresi said it best, he was elegant as a dancer. Everything was easy for him, which goes to show how football was so easy for Zinedine Zidane. And Matthew, this is your chance to talk about Zinedine Zidane because after, I think, to be honest with you, after Zinedine Zidane, kind of like Trap said before the podcast, those are probably the main four or five that we're talking about. And then we can have some honourable mentions later on. We don't have to discuss them as high and as freely as we need to. But um, I'd say this is the next, the last big one I can talk about before we move into some honourable mentions going forward. But Matthew, go ahead. Share with the audience about how Zinedine Zidane was one of the greatest showmen in football and how we, how people nowadays really, really annoys me. How they're comparing like De Bruyne to Zidane because of stats and goals and all of this. And you're just like, no. Zidane was much more than that because you never watched him play. He was the definition of the eye test for me in football. And he was someone I appreciated a lot more than a lot of footballers um, in football as well. Because again, being someone of Muslim heritage as well, I'm not, not going to make it all religious, but it was quite cool as a young man to see Cristiano Ronaldo play, Messi play, but to see someone who's top of their game as a Muslim footballer, for me, that was really cool. But how was it for you watching Real Madrid, Galactico, Zinedine Zidane, absolutely smash it in world football as an international player and as a club player at Real Madrid. First of all, give me what? Give me Zidane and 10 pieces of wood. Was it 10 pieces of wood? 10 pieces of wood. So Alex Ferguson needed to win a Champions League. That guy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know he's with me. He was so graceful. He had everything. You know? And you know what? He, his hair was so symbolic. He had all the hair coming around here, the board in the middle. What hair? <laughs> Don't disrespect him like that. Come on. No, listen. We know, you know what I'm talking about, but his touch, like, he, do you know what? I was even an Adidas Predator guy before. He made me buy a Predator, man. He had the perfect touch, left foot, right foot. I, I've looked back to what the goal against, I, you probably remember the, the team they play against, Beckham's pass and Zidane's finished left foot. I don't know who the current member of the team was um, at the Burnley Bowl. And he just, I don't know, just oozed class. For, that's my goat there. You know, we can talk about, what they do on a pitch. If you look at um, honours-wise, the guy won everything. 
He's won everything, Zidane, as well. So, Joshua did it in like Italy, that. did it in Spain, hmm? did it for the national team oh, as well. Oh, you're looking at it. Oh, something happened again. Sorry, I thought. <laughs> no, no, no I, I was again. thinking about, 90, you know, the 98, 2002 Trezor game. I was thinking about that period of France and he was the face. I just had like that, a flashback of that. That's why my face is. <laughs> no, he just, you know what? He just had everything. I remember even getting the number five. I was like, What's this? Like, because I'm I'm quite fussy with numbers. I don't care. Defenders have five, six, four, and all this. But when he took that, I was like, this guy. Let, let me watch. And he was just phenomenal at 21 at uh, Juve. And I think was it against you guys? He's just uh, suspended for one of the games, though. I think uh, so. Yeah, the away one. What? No, the home the, one. The home one. The home one in it where you got you come back three two or you won three or something. No, like that, that was good. in. It was in the one around two thousand two thousand one. It wasn't in the um. Nope. 2003 one when Beckham was there because Beckham oh, was wasn't there. Okay, okay, it yeah. was the one before that. Yeah, but yeah, it, whatever team he was part of, he was the main man. Like even at France, the main man. We can go back to the U. Was it Euros? Silver ball penalty. David James smacked it. Free kick. Smack. Like he just had everything. Grew up on the penalty spot before taking it. <laughs> Absolute yeah. mind games from Zidane right there. <laughs> and, and people, people might look to the incident regarding Mr. M. M. Matarazzi, um, but. Whatever, whatever happened there. But to do, even a penalty, you've got your face of Buffon in a final. You're not even smashing the ball, bro. You're just like, you know, I'm a dink you. Juan Luigi Buffon, no respect. And yeah, he, he that's my go. So when we talk now, I just want nothing but respect for him. Yeah, like my guy there, my guy Zidane. You know, and a Muslim brother as well, man. Come on, man. That's my guy. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what um, caused Matthew to say that, but I love that positivity <laughs> there as well. That's definitely being in the clips for the, for the funniest bit as well. Great to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, Traps, talk to me about Zinedine Zidane because we spoke briefly about him in our European Championship drafts a couple of weeks ago um, as well. I just need to hear your thoughts on how Zinedine Zidane is getting compared to a lot of these players that are playing in modern football now, the Modric's, the Cruz's, even when he's compared to Gerard and Lampard back in the day as well. Do you think that was the ultimate disrespect to see how people are comparing stats, goals and everything an, in terms of what it was as an eye test player and what he actually brought to the team, what he brought to the yeah, table? It's all about disrespect because back in them, I always, I've always been adamant that football was football back then and you had to be good to be, to stand out because there was many, many players that went to went to went on them, them them kind of stages, and you thought they was good players, and then the, the writing the writing came came on the wall very very quickly. But Zidane never he his temperament never changed. Yeah, he was he was ne he, he, he never ever looked for one minute like he was under any pressure doing anything, and that was the beauty of Zidane. He may not have got the the, the, the mass of goals. That he got, but the quit. It was more with with Zidane. It was more. It was more quality, not quantity. Do you know what I mean? So I agree. I I, I think that Zidane is one of the best players to ever ever. Finish. I mean, Preach. put it this way: yeah, he's one of the few players that can headbutt someone in a, in a final and not and is forgiven automatically <laughs> because, because you're the I guy. You're that guy. You're simply that guy. No one. He never got any stick for it. It was just you know what he done it. He, he was his last game. For, for for France and he just said, you know what, I'm not I'm not taking no shit off this off this Matarazzi geezer and just gave him what he deserved to be honest because apparently he was talking about his mum. One of the most funniest things that I remember about Zidane is that wasn't he supposed to join Blackburn Rovers or something like that? He was. He really yeah. was when they were they just won the Premier League as well back in nineteen. Yeah, he was meant to join Blackburn Rovers and that felt that felt I think it was Dal Bleach that took the manager then. Yeah, yeah. The Wolf, and then he ended up getting um, Tim Sherwood as well. He got he yeah. said who needs a diamond. You got Tim Sherwood in midfield. Crazy. Yeah, you've got you've gone from the Zidane to Tim Sherwood. You idiots. Yeah, Men you and... idiots. But yeah, Zidane for me, yeah, he's all he's definitely. He, Any time you mention midfielders, top midfielders, Zidane's name is just an automatic. It's just already it's already in there. It's already in there without even saying it. You know what I mean, so yeah, I I think Zidane is is a phenomenal player, and he he would always he, and the thing is, he's just he's he's took that that mentality he threw to management with him. It's like right, cool, and he's done things that you wouldn't ever you wouldn't he, not managers can only dream of. Do you know what I mean? About being a thing we've we've seen a lot of managers, a lot of good managers, we've seen the likes of Pep, we've seen the likes of Fergie. They couldn't manage to pull off the uh, a free P. I don't think you, I, I don't think the double was even done. Mm. Until 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 he came, so not only did he do the double, he then done the triple. So mm. he, he he will be forever ever immortalized in football as one of the greatest managers and player. Yeah, 
great tribute there, Traps, as well. Absolutely fantastic. And just for Joshua to take it away as well. Would you say that Zinedine Zidane goal against Bayern Leverkusen, when you're looking back at it in hindsight, is still the greatest Champions League final goal you've ever seen, Joshua? Because Bale's goal went hard as well against Liverpool. And it was incredible to see how he did that in front of Zinedine Zidane. And Zidane's reaction was priceless as well. Absolutely fantastic to see Bale do that against Liverpool. But um, first question was about the goal against Bayern Leverkusen. And the second question for you, Joshua, before we get on to our, our honourable picks later on down the line as well, is do you have a favourite moment of Zidane where people wouldn't really appreciate it from as well? Maybe one of his passes or his roulettes or his incredible touch on the ball as well, because he had one of the finest touches, if not the finest first touch in football history, in my opinion as well. So let's hear it, Joshua. Take it away with Zinedine Zidane. But yeah, for ha for Hamden, Hamden Park is the his, his greatest goal. And that's, uh, for me, when you take Zidane, you just think about that. You know, the technique, uh, you know, the pressure point to win it. You know, by the Weaker foot as well. If you want to say that was his weaker foot. His, his, you know, his second right. favourite foot, I should say. Zidane's. Just, yeah, amazing. Um, and um, me, the, the double against England. Because England, you know, they had worked in a position to get that result in the Euros. And he just said, nah. <laughs> like, he he just said, I'm him. Nah. He said, I'm him. In yeah, France, I, 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 I'm him. And and what he was doing for France at that period as well, in the early 2000s, he was their main man. He was, I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag you guys. I'm going to make you. And I think when you think about South Africa when France went, you know, downhill after the World Cup, it's very interesting. His leadership on off the field yeah, was, was missed. Was once again, you know, you know like you said, priceless. So, He's, he's missed the football for me. Three Champions League wins in a row. No one had done that before. What he's won on the pitch. You know, Guardiola won a great football like that. that let's be real, he wasn't. Yeah. Um, he played for Barcelona. Yeah, he might have been a Champions League team. What's the dance level? Because we've seen so many good players who've played the game and have gone into management. They don't have, not had a clue let alone go to three Champions League finals and win it and manage those egos. Because he's a Dan. You look to him, you're not going to chat to him. Um, but he's still tactically outclassed a few managers to do that. You know, it's not easy. And to have the, look, to have the hunger as well. Do you know, to have the hunger to keep doing it, that's underrated in these top-class footballers. You don't need to go manage Real Madrid and, and do that. He doesn't need to go do that. What for? Look at the career he's had. He's had a better career. And all the players that we've mentioned, Ronaldo, Messi, probably, maybe, yeah, that's it. In terms of career, what we've won, <laughs> it's very hard to name players. Maybe your Maradonas, your Pellies. That's how high you have to go. Mm. to say that these people have had better careers than Zidane. So mm. this guy still had the hunger to go and manage and win at Madrid. He's from, he, yeah, I mean, phenomenal has been said a lot on this pod, but we're talking about the the very best of the game here. And Zidane it, you know, epitomises that completely from his management and from his goals. You know, I, I, there's, there's too many moments. His, his run in 2006, it felt like he was dragging France. Like, you're coming to the final with me and we're winning this. No matter what, like, you're coming, we're doing this here. Um, yeah, yeah, great player, man. Great player. Another fantastic showman to add to the list. Introducing us in as he's a Dan. Um, and yeah, before we wrap up our podcast, we've gone through very, very big names as well. So we're going to see if Tierra remakes the list um, later down the line as well. But now this is a chance where everyone gets to pick their own personal pick as well. So again, we are talking about the greatest showman. And I think it's very fair for this list to have its own section. So it could be between six and 10, for example, where you get to pick your own personal preference of a footballer in this list. And I think we'll just agree on number five or number six as well. So Zidane, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo and Messi are definitely in our top four as well, which we'll decide later on. Now it's time for everyone to pick a player they think, you know what, deserves to be in this list. If they've done their research on them, if they just want to talk about them from their heart or from their mind as well, fair play to them all as well. And this is where you get your chance to pop them in the list. So Matthew, fire away, my friend. If you're looking across Europe and you're looking at a player who may not have won the Champions League, if we're not going with um, Traps' description of having won the Champions League, but they were still a fantastic player to watch and appreciate, do they deserve to be in this list? Or are they just someone who you think, you know what, they were great at entertaining us, but they never got their hands on the prestigious trophy, which is the Champions League. Um, let's hear it. If you had to pick one player from the Champions League history, who you think was an incredible showman, someone who got people off their seat, someone who got you gas when you're watching him at home or in the stadium as well, who would it be and why? Um, at first, special mention, I was going to go in the SCAT first. Mm. However, there's the guy that I'm going to talk about is currently in the Saudi League. Ooh! You're going there. I think, and he hasn't got that flair, 
you know where I'm going. Like Karim Benzema, I think, deserves a hell of a lot of credit. This guy is cold, has been cold from the beginning. From his de debut at Leon, I even put a tweet today because the rumours have been going back to Leon. I was like, <laughs> well, shave his hair and get the two lines back like he did when he first started. Would you, you know join I mean? in if he joined Arsenal alone, if he didn't go to Leon? Would you do that? If he, if he joined, look, can you not see the bandage? We're the same, you know. Just get on your hand as well. You get know, it all gold and wrapped and everything. You get it wrapped. We're the same, bro. But he, if you look at Ramage in uh, Champions League 1, we can talk about Ronaldo. Cool, Ronaldo's been you know, important to Ramage and all that. But there were games where Benzema would drag him through. Like, even in recent times, look at the Chelsea game away. Um, two, was it a head, two headers? It was two headers, wasn't it? Two a hat trick against headers. Stanford, a hat trick against Chelsea at Stanford Bridge. Great Iconic. finishes. And, and the thing with Benzema, he wasn't blessed with blistering pace, but he's he was just so smart in the box. His finishing was amazing. I look at the um, the man, even the Man City game, how he helped pull him through. And we talk about Zidane dragging. Uh, uh, Real Madrid for, or sorry, France for in certain games. Yeah. Benzema, Benzema did the same. And, you know, in that Champions League run where Ramjid had one of the toughest run-ins to a Champions League final I can I can ever remember. Uh, PSG, uh, Man City, I can't remember what's it. That's someone yeah, it's PSG, Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool. Liverpool. So like, you had the champions of France, you don't know the champions of Europe, you don't know the champions of England, then you had the former champions, five-time champions um, of Europe as well. And they Got crushed by Karen Benzema's brilliance. It's great. It's absolutely, really. absolutely phenomenal player. Like, yeah, he was great. Obviously, off the pitch, he had a few uh, questionable things. Yeah, we don't have to mention that. We don't have to mention that at all. We, we can carry on with it. We're not going to go into it. Don't worry. I'm going to go into it. But yeah, he, he honestly, one of my favorite players as well. Like, what, what he used to left foot, right foot, finish, head R. And I'm hoping Al Itad are looking now because you know what? Arsenal, you need a striker. Because we signed him, yeah. I told all you, man, now, yeah, we're winning that Premier League. Yeah, so I would please. love to see Benzema in England. That would be fantastic. I've always wanted to see it. Always, but I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's what's gonna happen there. Traps, don't say nothing because you, you look like you want to say something to that. Don't say that. But yeah, Traps Karim, is in a French shirt as well. So, <laughs> but yeah, Karim again. Yeah, but he didn't really get the chance at France, which was a bit of a disappointment. But yeah, for Real Madrid, yeah, yeah Benzema. That's my guy. So yeah, my special mention is Karim Benzema. There we go. There we go. You know Harry, I mean? the dream scoring in the Champions League final. And all I hear is when he used to score and Real Madrid play that, they, they do this thing after he scored the Bernabeu. So it's a weird thing. You lot need to take me there. You know, I know you visited there before, so drag me along next time, yeah? Yeah, Thank well, you. I'll, I'll let you know on the Airbnb details and the flights and everything. We'll get it sorted. It needs to happen because, again, one of my favourite moments in football is going to watch Real Madrid and Benzema's last home game um, against Rayo Vallecano as well. And he scored. It was fantastic to watch Karen Benzema play live and I really appreciated it. Um, as well and it was fantastic to really see the uh, adoration Real Madrid fans had for Karen Benzema and a lot of them were saying Karen Benzema will go down ahead of Raul as one of their greatest ever number nine strikers and I was like really? And they're like yeah we adore him we think it's fantastic and all the Champions Leagues that he won the Ballon d'Or that he won as well was a big feat um, for Karen Benzema with Real Madrid fans as well so Nice shout there, adding Karen Benzema to the list. I'm looking forward to seeing who Traps is adding to the list as well because he did say before he's got three or four. So I thought, you know what, let's switch up for this one. If there's a player that's coming straight from the heart, straight from the mind of Traps, who is he going to add to this one? Is it going to be Andy Cole? Is it going to be Neymar? Are we going it's for not, someone like Arjen Robin? It's, it's not going to be none of them because I thought about it and I thought, you know what, all we could talk about these 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 players that everybody knows, everyone knows what they can do. But I thought about it, who's I, I sat back and I thought to myself, who's really, yeah, when I think about Champions League, who did I really look forward to whose input? And do you know who's who who, who, who sprung to mind? Janinho. Do you remember Janinho from Leon? His free kicks. His free Cardo. kicks in the Champions League, yeah. Number that Cardo. was they would get you off your. You, you knew what time it was when Janino was standing over a free kick. I think he scored. I, I think it was. Is it ten or eleven in the Champions League? Something like yeah, yeah. But Something he, like that. But him for me, right? You just knew when I was young. You just knew when when he put the ball down. You know like, what? Look, he won so many games. I just he used to love giving it to Barcelona as well. He used to love. Giving them free kicks to Barcelona. Barcelona. So, yeah, I mean, Janino for me, when I think about Champions League, ITV, yeah, when I'm thinking about Janino, man, these free kicks, but I thought, you know what, that's one that people are going to forget about. He's one of them, he's he's a forgotten, a forgotten Champions League star, you know what I mean? 
gotten here in the Champions League as well. But yeah, just to clarify as well, he scored 75 free kicks in his professional career as well. So I didn't really define where he scored in the Champions League, but it was around 30 that he scored in the Champions League as well. And 44, I think, for Leon, which is incredible. And there is a case as well, Traps, that he could be one of the greatest free kick takers of all time. You've got your yeah, exactly. Beckham, you've got your Carlos's, got your Ward Prowse's, if you want to go down that route. But Janino doing it on the biggest of stages, season in, season out for Leon. Was incredible to see what he did and like you said as well his free kicks his technique of free kick wasn't really seen as common at the time and the fact mm -hmm. that loads of people have followed his influence as well was absolutely incredible but realistically speaking though what a player he was and i think he deserved a lot more time in the brazilian national team but even in the brazilian national team as well traps he wasn't first choice free kick taker which is annoying behind the pecking order of ronaldinho roberto mm. carlos sometimes adriano as well uh which is crazy he, he left, he left he, i think he left for the world cup though didn't he he, he did manage to grab a world cup didn't he yeah, I think he was there in 2002. Um, yeah. Which was the case. So. Uh, just a quick one on what you said, Trax, because he blasts from the past bringing that name up. I love it. And the free kick you talk about when he left Valdez struggling, right? From yeah, yeah, hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him yeah, wobbling, yeah. really. Wobbling. And you know what it was? I can't remember who they played yet. And I could see the he ball. He done it a few times against Barcelona. He did. And, but for me, there was one against, I think, Oliver Kahn. There was one against Oliver yeah, Kahn. Yeah, Bayern Munich as well. Yeah, Bayern Munich the as well, yeah. You remember that yeah. one? And I, I, you can yeah. see Keane never wants to give away free kicks. You know, they'll be pulling and they realise they'll be like, no, 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 carry on, carry on, carry on. You know? He literally, he literally, <laughs> yeah, he literally dunked on every top keeper you could think of. Madness. Absolutely that was madness. his decade though as well, 2001 to mm. 2009, just seeing Janino in European football because he ended up playing in the USA, he went to Brazil again as well. And But you got to see him, like you said, on ITV every Wednesday or so in the Champions League and it was absolutely mm. incredible to see what he really offered as well. And at the same time as well, and you probably guys might remember as well, there was another Janino who's playing for Middlesbrough at the time. So a lot of people... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah he's really he was good. pretty good. He was pretty good as well. <laughs> he, was, he was really good. But Janino, I'm going to try and pronounce his surname. So bear with me, everyone. And if there's any Brazilian listeners listening this week, I do apologize in advance. But Janino Pernambucano. Janino Pernambucano is one of the greatest free kick takers of all time. With what he did done at Leon was absolutely incredible, and this was during Leon's golden era of football, the early 2000s, seven-time French champions before the PSG money as well. Goes to show how talented he was. He won the Brazilian Championship two times as well, and he won the French Super Cup three times with Janinho. But his free kicks is what shone him higher than most midfielders, if not every midfielder in Europe, because Lampard will score free kicks, Gerrard will score free kicks, you'd see Xavi occasionally score free kicks as well, but no one would score at the level of Janino, which was incredible. Beckham would score so many free kicks, but they were neck and neck for a time, and then Janino just overtook David Beckham mm -hmm. in terms of scoring the total amount of free kicks of what he'd done, and really good shout there, Traps, really good player to, to mention as well. And before we get to Joshua as well, um, Joshua, any, any mention on Janino before going on to your play that you want to add to the list? Um, nah, no, no, I, I think you guys have said it all. I think he's one of the best in regards to free kicks, the memorable ones, ones <laughs> all the top, top goalkeepers. Um, and as, as you mentioned, the honors that he won, and we talk about flair throughout this whole uh time and it's this whole pod. Sorry, sorry, I've just got a message. I think Garner just tossed it. I think Garner have tossed it here. My sister's messaging me. I just I saw the update. I'm just seeing it's two that. two. Like I can't believe that we're two new up. I've I turned it off at eight. This is why I told you we'd record at this time, Joshua, because I don't want you to be heartbroken by your country again. It happens, my friend. I apologize on behalf of Ghana. Egypt have won. I think we're out. Sorry, you got a live time reaction. You got a live live reaction. Of Pain me. is real right now for Ghana. Just, I was freezing about, but no, Jorginho. Honestly, Jorginho. Sorry, one well, of the best to to, to take. Take the free kick <laughs> in the game. Oh, let me talk about my player, please. Let me talk about my player now. Is your player gone in by any chance? Are you adding? Brazilian. 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 He's Brazilian. He's Brazilian. He's, he's Brazilian. Um, yeah. Uh, Only love can hurt like this. Or as well, Matthew did once upon a time, <laughs> um, the Coldplay song. What was it, Matthew? Oh, uh, you home. Yeah, listen, that song. Uh, what's it? It's raining Bixi. on Joshua right Bixi. now. It's raining that on God right now. Let's play that after Josh. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Or James Blood. Speechless Maybe right now. Maybe. I'm trying, I just can't. I, I just like what? Maybe just, 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 just relax. Just relax. Just relax. Don't smash anything. Just relax. As soon as, 
Breathe in through your nose, Joshua. All I'm saying. About, about Virginia, I got a notification. My sister said, what have Ghana done? I was just like, what? what? What have they done? Uh, anyways, Kaka. Kaka is my player and Kaka's in my top five. Wow. I think Kaka is absolutely sensational. If it, wasn't for, if it wasn't for the great, you know, Ronaldo and Messi, we'd never ever stop talking about Ricardo Kaka. Splendid footballer. Um, fantastic serial pedigree. Dunked on the very best in Europe, Manchester United. That assist to Crespo, not Shoshenko, Crespo, <laughs> it's in Istanbul. Joshua knows um, ball. I'm loving it. I'm, I do I'm know ball, this, which is great. I've got a second chance to prove that. Um, <laughs> but it's through balls, it's crosses, he's finishing. I mean, he, what did he do to Evra? I think it was Evra and Hanzai putting them together. Mm. And then, you know, we talk about that Rooney goal um, past AC Man 3 2. He absolutely tore us apart at the Sands during a week later. He said, nah, mate, we're going to the final, not you. <laughs> You're not setting up a United-Liverpool final. It's going to be Milan. And um, and in every way, look, you've got Ronaldo, Rosinho, sorry, you've got, you know, you've got Ronaldo, R9, you have other ballers around you. I just think he stood, you know, in such a European pedigree, winning the Champions League, those great games, those great goals. Yeah, I think for me, I think he's top four, isn't it? personally. My question I mean, to you, Joshua, is will Kaká stand the test of time? in football history with all of these new players who are no longer tens but advanced midfielders getting in with the stats and the goals and you're seeing someone like Phil Foden win the uh, Premier League five times or something and you're seeing him win the Champions League well, are we going to see someone like Kaká who was such a great star coming out of nowhere and being the, the, the shining light in that amazing AC Milan team and then just again dying out by 2010 when he got so many injuries for Real Madrid as well are we going to see more of these fans just not really care about that type of footballer anymore because that like, number 10 was such a revered place in football once upon a time and now people just don't want to play there anymore because it's going to be mean me meaning you're going to be pressing more you're going to be working hard you're going to be the first person to actually work with the strike when you get the ball as well as opposed to being the one who has that freedom to go anywhere on the pitch and dictate the play do you think that's going to be something that's going to be very very difficult going forward for football fans i think we have we struggle to see someone like him in terms mm. of his close control, he's driving the ball, his accuracy in the passing. There's a way to score a goal now in the modern day football. And it's only going to continue as the years go on. But it's up to us to have these podcasts, have these discussions to to keep his name forward. He probably doesn't have the moments, say Zidane or Ronaldinho or R9 and Messi and uh, Cristiano have. But outside that bracket, he's probably the best out of the lot. He really is. Uh, and for what he won and what he contributed in, in, in the Italian league where the 90s it was all about Serie A, early 2000s just about and then everybody left and it became the Premier League show more you know predominantly in the Liga of course with the Galacticos and past owners emerging as a major commercial giant Sierra was struggling but he was able to kind of pull the dots and create some good Champions League moments we talk about Mavericks and Showman I think he's up there um, but in terms of his legacy what a showman he was I think we've got to kind of keep talking about him really he's probably the one that you, you, you can't show like Trap saying and I don't think anybody was watching Kaka in IT, but he was as good as, you know, as good as Ronaldinho on his day, but we just need to talk to him, talk about him more. I do remember when it was just before lockdown, he came to play in London and uh, in like a power. That was when life was sweet. Before lockdown, Kaka I'm, played I'm, in London. T tell us the story, Joshua. Tell us the story. And uh, he was playing with, I don't know who he was playing with. Oh, where have I gone? I don't know who he was playing with. <laughs> and um, it was with Joshua. Like, Joshua was the one who was like, cut back. Cut and some guy was just like, Kaka. Pull me back, and he just <laughs> levered it, top pins. <laughs> oh man, this is about like this is who is that guy? I need to find him. And <laughs> no, do you know him. what? Do you know what? I think the guy because he was on Twitter. I think it's in that guy named Ali D. I think he does pictures because he put on oh, a, a he was like, oh, it's me that called it. That video is one of the epic <laughs> videos, and it's just the way he's asking me, "Come on, what? Oh, come come back, <laughs> come back." Kaka's like, "Are you dumb?" Ballon <laughs> yeah. d'Or winner right here. One of the best wow. players in AC Milan's history, right here. I think, think, I think for me with Kaka, yeah, I hate. What, I just, I just hated Kaka for what he done to everyone. I just hated him. <laughs> he I, violated I, him. I he violated God, everyone. After that game, I just hated him so much. And you know what? Like, and you know what it was? I mean, I, I, as you get older, you mature and that, and you realize that Kaka was an excellent player. But 
I just feel that Kaka's time at Madrid is what overshadowed his his his, his um his, his, how phenomenal he was at AC, and obviously he had the likes of obviously Benzema and and who and uh, and Ronaldo as the, as coming in as well. He had he had, he, he, he wasn't the main man there, so he kind of he kind of he kind of sort of tainted tainted your glasses through um what how he how he how he performed at AC. But what he done to to Evra was it Heinz was it Heinz and Evra? Yeah, hands in ever, yeah, yeah. Hands in ever, yeah. I, I, I'd never forgive him for that. I just never forgive him for that. I, you know what I mean? I just think, yeah, you, you, uh, you didn't have to take the piss like that. Yeah, you didn't have to. That's called being a showman, traps. That's how we. That's how we did it on the grandest of stages as well. Old Trafford semi final. I think they were one 0 down at the time or one one, and he just violates two defenders to so then collide into one another as well. Crazy times yeah. to be an AC Milan fan as well. And then golden era in the early two thousands was incredible to see, but. Another quote on Kaka, um, if I haven't said one already, was the fact that there's a big one actually by Frank Lampard as well. I'm going to read it all out. Uh, bear with me with this one as well. So Kaka is the only player in the world I would pay money to watch. Some of the things I've seen him do on the pitch amaze me. He has the lot. Fantastic skill, pace, vision, great passer, and he scores goals. As a midfield player, you are lucky if you have three of those attributes. And it goes to show because he was the best player in 2007 and it was before the aliens came over from Messi and Ronaldo as well so great shout putting Kaka and, and annoyingly Joshua he was my pick so you stole him from me so really good shout there we great minds think alike with this one as well and I happily would have ha I'd have him in my top five without a shadow of a doubt yeah. um my one is a bit of a bit of a throwback but I'm pretty sure you all appreciate him for what he's done mostly because of his undeniable loyalty he had in the game of football. One of the few one club men who loved his club for a passion was at this club for 28 years, 25 of them in the first team squad as well. And he brought so much to it. Matthew, who are you picking? Who have you got? Who I think you put, I think you've gone with Francesco. Totti. Yes, I have. I'm putting Totti Eternal into this list. City. Yes. Eternal City, eternal footballer. I can get another wife. I can get new kids, but I can't get another football club. Jeez. Can't be saying that in front of my family. That would not be great at all, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm saying it live on the internet, which is crazy to see. But yeah, for Francesco Totti, he was the rarest of breeds, a dying breed of footballer that he was as well. A trequatista um, as a footballer, withdrawn forward from a number nine. He was a fake nine before Messi became the quintessential fake nine in world football as well. A player capable of combining genius, vision, technique, athleticism to the top of his game. And he did it for his local club. He could have played for Real Madrid, in my opinion. He could have gone to any club in the world. They would have loved to have had him as a footballer as well. But Francesco Totti, for me, one of the greatest players. He's definitely in the top three of greatest footballers that's not won the Champions League as well. And again, his connection to Roma, his connection to the Champions League. Seeing Roma in the Champions League was basically because Francesco Totti had driven them there as well. You can't remember many of the great coaches they've had. Capello was one of them. Um, it's great to see a few players like Edin Dzeko and Mohamed Salah do really well for Roma uh, back in the day. Daniele De Rossi was fantastic as well. But Francesco Totti was someone, even with that tight kit, that Kappa kit as well, you're looking at and you're thinking Francesco Totti heritage right there with Montella, with De Rossi, um, with even Zabina at the back as well. Cafu once upon a time. But I think Francesco Totti for me has to make it into this list as well because he was there from the very beginning and he was always in and out of the Champions League um, as well. Would you agree, Matthew, with this one, putting him into the list as an honourable mention? Yeah, no, most definitely. He was, he was part of that um, that great, I say great Roman team, like a good Candela, Cafu. Mm. I remember Aldair as well. Um yeah. Mancini, the, that winger, that Brazilian winger. Who was winger? the guy that did that skill today? Today. Today. Um, yeah. yeah, today, yeah. It's a part of that. And um, he's got some great goals. And like you said, that that loyalty you don't get in today's football. You know what I mean? Coutinho did the complete opposite of that. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, it, it's, it's He went the wrong way around in football as well. He went from Inter Milan, <laughs> Liverpool, Barcelona, and he went downhill from there. You know what I mean? Wrong so, way around honestly, in football. And they loved him. They loved him. And, I think the closer to him after that at Roma was probably Daniel De Rossi, wasn't it? Like, yeah. Mm. Was he was like, nowhere near, though. He was nowhere near. No, no, no. Not in terms of quality. I'm saying in terms of the duration of staying at the club. No, not yeah. quality wise. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. But um, in terms of signing the contract every single yeah, season, basically. You know I mean? But yeah, no. Trust me, I, I loved him. Great player. Great, great player. And the chip. I can't remember who, who was that against. Uh, Man City. Oh yes, yeah. It, oh yes. 
Yes, exactly. So I was like thirty eight year old Francesco Totti yeah. doing the thing. And it was crazy good, to see. Good, good player. I, I think he's still involved at the club, isn't he? As well. Yeah. Now. You couldn't take Totti away from Roma if, if you if you tried. The fact yeah. that he's just there all the time is crazy to Quick see. Quick question. Did anyone bid for him during his career at Roma? Did Real anyone... Madrid did. Yeah. Oh, was it? Real Madrid oh. tried to get him and Juventus tried to get him as well. Um, respectively. And Chelsea tried to get him when Abramovich came in him yeah. in his first season, but it wasn't the case, unfortunately. <laughs> What a player. Yeah, Francesco Totti is in the list from my point of view as well. So if you're looking at the names on this list, we may have one more space for one more person as well. So we've got Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Ronaldinho, Zinedine Zidane, Karen Benzema, Juninho, Kaka. And yeah, and then Francesco Totti as well. Can I just say, it doesn't feel like a showman list without one of the greatest showmans of all time. R9. I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah. He never won the Champions League, but I think he's the greatest footballer ever to not win the Champions League as well. Um, would we all be in unison of having R9 in this list? 100%. Yes. That's fine. Joshua, fire us away with R9 and how him being the probably the, the most billed Galactico um, as well. The fact that he came back from winning the World Cup in 2002 to Real Madrid and he... Almost, he was there to win the Champions League, realistically speaking, at Real Madrid. And he was there to get them the eternal prize of being the greatest team in Europe. And it wasn't that Ronaldo, unfortunately, couldn't do it. It's just the fact that the whole team they had lost Claude Bacalady and replaced him with Thomas Gravison, for goodness sake, as well. They had no linchpin because they had so many... I need to find the quote. But they had so many attackers and they had no one to hold it down in the field. But R9, what football are right, Joshua? Oh, incredible. I think it's the only time players scored a hatchet past Martin. I'm smiling. I'm thinking, <laughs> bro, bro. Best sign him up. I remember it was the day me and mum watching it were clapping. Unreal player. Unreal. Unplayable. In every in every metric you can manage. The, the ultimate striker for me. The ultimate striker. The best striker this game we've seen. Look, Ronaldo Messi put him in another section. But this guy, for Brazil, he was amazing. Yes, he didn't win the Champions yeah. League. But when you watched him play, oh, the technique... The finishing, the way you go past the the, the goalkeeper, the step even, overs, the balance, jeez, the, 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 even the weight. I loved it because he was big, kind of played into his mansion. How he kind of played <clears> the game, you know, he wasn't phys overly physical, but he had like a weight to his passing, a weight to his his touch, protecting um, the ball in those yeah, in his yeah, one of ones oh. as well. And then he had a burst of pace as well. Let's not forget, like he could move, like the guy could move. That pace you know? was just scary pace back <laughs> in the day. You know, head down, you're not touching him. Um, and it's a shame he never got it done for Real Madrid. Obviously, a lot of those players didn't at the time. Your Figos, your whatnots, who were there. But yeah, as I said, I've never seen anyone score a hatty pass, you know, at Old Trafford like that. And it was it wasn't the first half, wasn't it? Wasn't the first second half? half. Hey, second, second half, half. Hey, my bad. But, Poor goalkeeper, though, bro. Bartes coming taking the piss. Listen, we're not here to talk about Bartes. We're here to talk about R nine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't talk about Bartes. We could talk about Layman in the final. We don't want to talk about that, please. So, or Armunia. Yeah, well, Munia. That we doing? Oh, Almunia, that Almunia, that hologram. There we go. <laughs> Before he started back bleaching his hair. Gosh, well, back to R nine. But yeah, R nine was. I don't. I think for me, like, it's 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 kind of once again with Messi and Ronaldo. It's hard to to kind of spread how good he was because he. I think he's one of the best. He's the best striker for me that I've seen in my lifetime. Um, one on one, one on one. I've got a gun to my head. Who do I want running through and goal, scoring a goal? It's Ronaldo. It's fact Ronaldo. It's R nine because what he's gonna do. He's gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna step over past the goalkeeper. He ain't gonna slot in. He's gonna go around him and slot, and then score. So yeah, he he is the yeah he's the man, man. He's the man. I wish he, he yeah. I just wish he came prem, man. But he, yeah, we, we saw him when we needed to. Traps fire away. How can you add to that? I think the only thing that stopped Ronaldo was the only thing that could stop Ronaldo was injuries, and it did. But even so, even with he was another one. You knew he wasn't training. You knew he wasn't. <laughs> he, you he, knew wasn't. He, he couldn't but, train. He's finished, mate. You knew he wasn't training. But him, I think, did it, I, I think yeah. For, for Ronaldo, for me, you have to remember, he was one of the... He When I was a kid, he was the one of the first flair players with all the skills that would that could score goals. He wasn't just someone who just messed about. He was the one that... We, he, he would embarrass people on week in, week out. Uh, Inter Milan days, obviously. Um, I remember him scoring that goal, um, scoring the goals at Old Trafford, and it was, the place was just silent. It was just like it was, it was like, was that even a goal? Like, what, what, what is happening here? 
The one where it flew off something. his foot into the side netting was crazy. It just flew off his foot and you're just like, that's sheer power. That's raw power from Ronaldo. Yeah, for me, no gym the, work involved. the fact that he, it, it, I remember, remember when um uh when he, it, if he was is it two thousand yeah two thousand and two when he had the when he had the the haircut the half haircut and everyone was like oh Ronaldo's finished uh, from from ninety eight and blah de blah 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 and he just came back and he proved everyone wrong. How many goals did he get in that tournament? How many of you guys actually did the Ronaldo haircut? I need I need to know. I need to know. No, I, I, know. Know. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed. allowed, man. My God, I wasn't I allowed. I wasn't allowed. allowed. No, I wasn't allowed. <laughs> no way. That was the only time I got a haircut after a footballer. I got the David Beckham mohawk. I didn't. Do, I didn't do the blonde bit, but I got it after David Beckham because everyone's after the Beckham one in two thousand two. But I think in two thousand two, he scored seven goals in that tournament. Yeah, so he proved goal. everyone wrong, and that's that. That was Ronaldo. That was, that was Ronaldo probably at at sixty five percent. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, his 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 um his 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 uh, ability was was endless, man. He's got eight um, goals. Um, just to clarify, eight goals. In the yeah. Cup. So he, he he came back and he and he sh- and he showed everyone what's what. But um, yeah, man. For me, he goes down as one of the greatest players. I think people do, the problem that is because because of the injuries that he had, it mm. didn't the period of time that he was in. He, that's why he, he kind of goes under the radar. But if you look at his record, if he actually had a decent ten year stint, he would have blew everyone out of the park with, with what he would with, with the way he was scoring goals in his in his prime. Mm. So yeah, I mean, R nine. I mean, I remember the first pair of football boots. Yeah, do you remember those those R nines? Do you remember those? They were those are the first pair that I ever had. I still got them, you know. I still got them. I'm they're still, they're still, they're still, they're still now. You can still buy them now. Yeah, still them. Yeah. Just in your size now, Matthew, which would be fantastic <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, Matthew, just to finish off on R nine as well. Do you think it's one of the greatest what ifs in football if R nine had been fully fit throughout his whole career, or do you think that's just the player he was? He wasn't really someone who did gym work. He wasn't really someone who trained really hard, like you saw with a lot of players as well. They would train hard, but never had the natural ability, the God given ability like R nine had as well. And for me, one of the biggest what ifs in football was imagine if that Real Madrid two thousand three team won that semi final against Juventus and they took yeah. on Carlo Ancelotti's AC Milan. Thoughts, Matthew. Yeah, no, I, I do think it is a big what if thing. I think at the time when that injury happened, um, I didn't really understand the magnitude of it. But, you know, Brazilian fans were going mad, and back then there was no Twitter and all of that. And I was like, people need to relax. Like, I'm sure someone else can come in. But obviously, <laughs> our, over, over the years, you start thinking, rah, that's why. And obviously, France went and won that World Cup. Um, and one of the biggest things I saw, I don't know if you've seen a clip of Desai in Turam mm. when they're talking about Ronaldo. Like, and these are two great defenders, and you're seeing them talk, and they're bricking themselves. You're thinking, nah, this is a man. Like the fact that these two great defenders are worried about someone around, I'll tell you everything. Um, even in his latter days, you're still doing it. You know what I mean? Um, the goals he scored, I think like, one of his last Brazilian goals was against Ghana. Was it was it Ghana or yeah, we are, not, really? we are going really? there, really? Joshua. Really? Sorry, really? Joshua, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I forgot. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> And then, uh, um, the and then he scored in the final, didn't he? Against Germany as well. Did Twice. Twice, yes. And yeah, he honestly, he, just, he was just a joy to watch. Um, the goals he scored. But you know what is the only thing I'll say? You know, for a lot of these Brazilian players, I don't know if they really have that long time span. You look at all the players, they've all got that four, four years, three, four years at the top. Ronaldinho, mm-hmm. Neymar, obviously with Sad Seals kind of name on Adriano had it as well. So we really, as even as a what if, we don't know if we would have had that longevity because I don't know. Is there a Brazilian out there that has had that ten year span? Would have been on top of their game. Don't see it. Yeah, no, exactly. Carlos, if that. Exactly, if that, you know what I mean. And it's, I think you know, with them, it's. Uh, I don't want to go too in depth on this one. I feel like how they've grown up. It's football. Obviously, was their passion. Like you look at. I'm not going to put him in the same because people just think I'm saying Gabriel Jesus is as good as him. So I'm not going to use Gabriel. Jesus. Don't do it. Brazilian don't ruin really, really your credibility here, Matthew. That's not what you're here for. Come on now. No, but you Do know what? I think the way they've grown up football is, is in them. They, when they get to that top, they make the money, whatever, and they go off and do their thing. Os- Oscar is a prime example. Oscar mm. said, I'm going to China because of the money. Straight up, I don't care about anything else. And that's it. So, yeah, yeah it, it, it's, a shame. it's a shame how the career went. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic player. Nah, that's fair enough. Nicely but done, everyone. Brazilian are here for a good time, not for a long time, man. That, that's it. That's it. <laughs> and, and you know what? Just quickly, you like when I look at uh, pictures of Adriano now, I'm like, 
Bro, you were once banging for in and Brazil. Magic chilling now in Brazil, you know. Favela it, settings. He's got a collab with Dave as well, which is crazy to think about. <laughs> and just, you're just like, what's what's Adriano doing? The face of Pez. 99 bro. shot. 99 like, power. 99 bro, power. 99 power, mate. You know what that was? That 99 shot power got me out of jail so many times. <laughs> Adriano and Ricoba up front. What a partnership for Inter. <laughs> but they kick off and shoot straight away, bro. Like, <laughs> mad. No, it's actually crazy because I still have it. I still use my PSP as well. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. If anyone is yeah. listening, a PSP is a PlayStation Portable if you're too young to understand. But a PSP, <laughs> um, whenever I'm traveling abroad as well, I don't like using my phone, but having a PSP playing PES, yeah. crazy, oh, crazy. Nice when playing it as well, which is good fun to see. So that's kept me occupied as opposed to having these in flight entertainment options as well. But no, uh, great nostalgia pick for having R9 and talking about Adriano as well. Um, but the question remains, everyone. There is still one spot left if you don't want Thierry Henry on your greatest showman's one. So I'm going to throw a few names out there. Andres Iniesta, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Alessandro Del Piero. You want to throw in Eric Hansen? I don't mind it at all. Wayne Rooney, is he not a greatest showman as well? Are we going to put him higher than Henry? Um, crazy <laughs> to think that we've still got one spot left after what? What, what about what about Iron Robin? Iron Robin. That simple yeah. but effective movie did every single. Are we not including Neymar in this one? Short but a good time. Another one, another Brazilian. It was fantastic. Samuel Eto, Samuel Eto fantastic yeah. striker. Great. Great. No, no, no one's doing Mbappe now. Mm. Has he won? The, yeah, he won the Champions League. Not That's not yet. about winning. Don't have to win it. But I'm yeah, but he's, not, he's, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not at the balls yet for that. Yeah. The, you know. And Mbappe still produce. got many years of Champions League football to 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 to, 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 to forge his his. No, no. His I'm just chucking their name out there. And the thing is, I'm remembering. Remember when he first burst through at Monaco? Yeah. Man went. Mm. Man went to the Etihad and ripped it up, bro. With a great Monaco team, may I add as well. So just chucking the name there. Um, it's, it's interesting though. We're all dismissive about that, but he's the best player on the planet right now. That's he's the, mo- he the greatest current <laughs> showman in world football right like, now. Nah. <laughs> but he's the best know, player. He, show. he is the gold what, standard man. right now in terms of entertainment in football, killing Mbappe. That's the crazy right, thing. Can I just say something? Like, you lot are going to think I'm here loving United as well. Do you know who I don't think gets enough credit at United? I know he's off the field. He's done a lot of rubbish. Yeah. Oh. Slapping raw chicken, yeah? <laughs> but I... No, no, no. <laughs> I don't... Oh, God. Doing I don't Indian think, TikToks now, yeah? Crazy. I don't think Giggs gets enough credit. You know? He's been blacklisted, that's why. He's, he's, we don't mention don't, him on this podcast. I know, I know. I just, Look, I just he's, wanna... he's been blacklisted the Premier League. Man United, they don't even tweet. They don't, nothing. It's mad. But he's our greatest player of all time. I don't when say, I think but... about Champions League, like back in the... Even back in the... Bro, this guy... Like... Giggs versus Juventus at the Stadio della Lepi no. coming on as a sub was crazy. Listen, wait, wait, guys. Can you now respect me? Because, come on. I'm, come on. Yeah, Matt knows ball. Matt knows ball. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to make Traps happy, man. He's not smiling enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just think, I don't know. I, uh, uh, it's sad, I mean, but honestly, listen. It is, cause I know what he's done, but you can't, what the guy has done. He's a baller, man. He's a baller. I, I mean, ripped, I, you know, let me say, okay, can I just tell you something? You know that game? Let me, sorry, Hamza, to go off topic, right? No, go, go for it. Run, run it, run it, run it, run it, run it. FA, FA Cup, yeah? When they used to do different stadiums, yeah, Villa Park, yeah. I, all I had was teletext. I'm looking, <laughs> yeah, cool. One one, cool. Better come pen. What saved? I thought, all right, cool. We get we get to pens, bro. I watched that goal and I thought he ripped us apart. And you know that was the only place you could finish it past Seaman. And the way he did, oh man, he he was a great player. No, he's not. Mad about that season. I'm sure he only scored like four goals in that season. I'm sure it was. You know, what? he never really scored too many. And with him, he always got an assist before the assist. You know what mm. I mean? Like he, he didn't really got a lot of respect because of that. But in the a lot big of cutbacks games, as well, Ryan Giggs did as well. Not just crosses, cutbacks were really I, I, big. Things. Was there was there not a time where you played him centre mid for a bit? As yeah, well? yeah, Giggs, yeah. Giggs, yeah. Like, Giggs. And, but you know, Joshua, you're right. You know, now I think about it, he's not mentioned anywhere. Like, they removed him. They they removed him. No, it's mad. We don't tweet about him. He doesn't Premier even get League invited to Old Trafford fame. anymore as well. Wow. Not in the box. Premier, Premier League Hall of Fame. He should be number one. He's won the most. He's had, you know, one of the best appearances, but he's not going to get it. Like, mm. he's proper been flatlisted away from the sport. And rightly so for what he's done off the field, but on the field. And for that man, poem as well. Really Atrocious nice. poem. Awful poem, what he wrote. Can't yeah, I don't want to. Back to the back Don't give me time, because when you said he's been blacklisted, I've nearly said something about you that have been blacklisted, but I'm going to keep quiet. We're going to do that today. We're going to do that. But Giggs, I think he should have another podcast, Matthew. Well. Right, another podcast. 
I think he should have a mention as well because he has some really yeah. good Champions League performances. Scored a penalty in Moscow, and you know mm. Chelsea came on just for that purpose. Um, and he had a listen. I write any type of gigs properly, you know, because he he gets it's like we've erased it from time. Look at the ball in the Premier League. He played to Owen to beat City. He's oh. phenomenal. The ball he played outside, for Makeda as well. Outside the boot, get off this line, man. This is, we're talking, we're talking <laughs> ball. Like, like, and you know what? And what I love about him as a winger as well, you know, you've got wingers where their job is just taken on, man. But they're doing it. The defenders know you're going to come take me on, but you're just taking them on anyway. We never yeah. had that Arsenal. And when I watch Arsenal, we've never had that type of winger. If you walk up, be passing and running off. I want to <laughs> go at him, take him on. And that's what Giggs was great at. You had that, that side, you had Beckham, that wouldn't take you on, but whip it. Oh, yeah. man. stop gassing you lot up anyway. Him, 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 him and Conselcius were like, that's what got me into United. That's proper mm. old school wingers ball. You talk about 4 4 2. Proper. What, you know, man, what Man United is. That's it. That's what we don't have at the moment. I like, look yeah, at our wingers. Proper. Not to make this about Man United now, but that's what gets me upset. I don't know about you, Traps and Hamza, but that's what I love. I want wingers. I want you to get the ball yeah. like a Nani Ronaldo and fucking run. I don't need mm. this. Oh, I don't know where you are. Where's <laughs> Dallas? <laughs> fucking run, like, you know what I mean? You don't need it. Wing play is what did it. And that's what, oh, that's, what, that's what showmen were. They were wingers who could actually do so much. Like, we could even put goalkeepers in this last little position as well. We could put Zlatan Ibrahimovic in. But I think it would only be a good service to this podcast and to everyone who's been on as well. Like Gareth Bale, we've not mentioned him as well. What a show oh. he was in the Champions League. He was fifth on my list. He was fifth on my list. Gareth Bale was unreal in terms of what he offered for Spurs and for Real Madrid. The goal that he yeah, has in bravado. Yeah. I, I agree. I think Gareth Bale should go in there. Gareth Bale well, over everyone else, yeah? We happy with that one? Yeah, Gareth, Bale, Gareth, Bale was, yeah. Gareth Bale was ending careers at Spurs, man. He, he was he was something special. Ended man. careers at Real Madrid as well. Karius, never to be seen again. Crazy. Yeah. The, 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 you, I, you know what? He he was doing, this is kind of mad. You know like how with Jude now, where he's gone in and he's getting the adulation of what he's doing? Oh, That's I'm so was. stupid. I'm so sorry, everyone. But I'm wearing a Gareth Bale shirt. I've got Bale on the back as well. I'm so sorry. How could I forget but about Gareth Bale? He, he went there. You know, like, we, we all have this thing. When you get, like, a British person that goes out to these leagues, you think, are they really going to struggle? How are they going to get accustomed to it? Bale hit the ground running. I think he did his score his mm-hmm. debut. Villarreal, I think. I did think so, yeah. He was, he was starting right mid, I think. Right, mid. Then he scored a goal. He ripped Bartra. I don't think Bartra ever recovered from that. <laughs> Ended up moving yeah. to Dortmund like, and Real Betis now. Like he, it was scary. But imagine you had him and Ronaldo. You know, we talk about the leap, right? And Di Maria. Di Maria. He, oh, him as well. Nah, you know what? We can keep going. You know, Let, let's stop. Let's stop. But yeah, Gary, nah, D, D, D Maria. He can, he can f off, man. I'm <laughs> This is before he came on the Van Hal, so I didn't mind him then. Didn't mind him. He could go to hell. <laughs> Both of them can. But you know what, Gary? <laughs> again, great player. I think uh, was it Atletico Madrid when he got that goal extra time as well, which mm. was clinched. You know, the Man City one as well. That was a clincher as well. Yeah, yeah. Pellegrini's exactly. Man City in the semi final. Oh. That was crazy to think about. But um, before we go on to any more about Gareth Bell, traps. Let's talk about again. It's time at Spurs, man. What a time it was to be watching Spurs in the Champions League. And you're like, Spurs in the Champions League, down to 10 men at the San Siro, coming back to 4-3, losing, but a hat-trick from Gareth Bell. And might I add, Aaron Lennon's amazing game, Gareth Bell as well. Both flying wingers, but the greatest Mm -hmm. showman in that game for me. Um, It wasn't Eto, it wasn't Milito, it wasn't Wesley Schneider. It was Gareth Bale, absolutely Mm -hmm. killing it and almost silencing the San Siro. What were you going to say about that, Traps, before his return leg or return game when he ruined Mykon's career? He retired him on that day. Gareth Bell was just an elite talent at the end of the day. He was, he was just, his his mentality, because I remember he was he was going to join United for, he was, he was, going, to, he was going to join United, well, United came in for him and he was just like, no, he wanted to play. He 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 he, he, wanted, to, he wanted to go to somewhere he could play. I mean, he started, game, his career, started his career at left, at left back. And it's just, I think, was that, was, was that Redknapp's doing? It was Redknapp's doing, wasn't it? It was like, you, you, you turned him from a left-back to a winger. Yeah. yeah. And, Under one and, day Ramos, he was a left-back. And he just, he literally just, he just, he literally just, he literally just took off the shackles and Gareth Bell never looked back. I mean, yeah, that, that, de- that, that demolition job on my con, yeah, is, is, oh. is, 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 It's football heritage. Epic. Yeah. Like, that is, that is, that goes down as one of the biggest demolition jobs you will ever see. 1v1 <laughs> and um yeah but and, and also you got he got his um he got his just desserts for all the effort that he put in i remember the goal where he, remember that, that iconic goal where he ran off the pitch and um he, he, he he's, he's running with the ball and he ran off the pitch and, and he put the ball around who did he put the ball around 
Bartra, like Matt just Bartra. said. Bartra, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ran off the pitch. That was like, and then obviously, um, Cardiff, the final in Cardiff. Obviously, he's he's, 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 he's home country, and it was is that where he scored the is that where he scored the the the, 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 the sort of scissory bicycle kick? Uh, no, that it wasn't was that one. against Liverpool. He came on as a sub um, in that game because it was that four four two diamond where you had Isco at the ten. Uh, Zinedine Zidane. Mm. Yes, but so anyways, he got he got his Champions League in Cardiff. So yeah, I mean Gareth Bale for me is one of the most. I mean his attitude, <laughs> his attitude when you know, like when he used to hold things like uh, golf, Wales golf, and then Madrid, Madrid. And things like that. I rate, he it. Just, I rate it though. Yeah. I think too many there, footballers. Bit of character too. to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was there was there was little incidents. I mean, I think I think Robert, I feel that Gareth Bell just thought to himself at the end of the day, look, I am I have done a lot for this 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 club, and these Real Madrid fans don't respect me, so I don't respect them either. I remember there was a time when Varane tried to pass him like that one of the flags, and he's just looking at him like, why are you passing yeah. it to me for? Yeah, don't want it. Then, yeah. don't want it at all. Yeah, and it's just and there's a, there was another one. There was another one where they won a game and they, and they showed you the inside of the changing room and he's just there like and then someone put on the caption underneath says get me out of this shit hole. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Gareth Bell was just a legend, man. And I I, I really I, I was that was one of the transfers that I really wanted to happen. I really wanted him at United and it just never happened. And then every so often we'd get we get a mention that oh they 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 they, they, they not had interested, but Ooh, never Mourinho <laughs> wants him. He's gonna he's gonna sign him this summer, and then nah, it just doesn't happen. I mean, they, they, and and uh, uh, um, in two thousand and thirteen, um, or tw- twelve or thirteen, apparently Fergie was adamant he was gonna get Gareth Bale, but it never happened. It never happened. But he wanted to sign Gareth, Gareth Bale as a parting gift for David Moyes when he retired, but he ended up getting mm. Wilfred Zaha instead. Um, which also didn't turn out very well for us, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Joshua, you know you had him on your list as well. He did score that amazing goal or two goals in Kiev, but I want to talk to you a bit more about that 2014 final against Atletico Madrid. We're in extra time already. Ramos has scored the goal to equalise and who pops up after a Di Maria cross slash shot to head it into the back of the net? It's Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale got the deciding mm-hmm. goal to make it 2-1 and it ended up being 4-1 in that final in Portugal in the Benfica Stadium, incredible stadium as well. How good was Gareth Bale when he first came onto that scene at, at at Real Madrid? And how scary is it? How scary is it that we saw BB, what was it called? BBC, Benzema, Bale, Cristiano compared to MSN because MSN was there for two, three seasons. BBC continued for years and it was a dominance in Europe and it was frightening to see. And it's also due, it's also relevant that we've got all three of them on our list as well. Benzema, Ronaldo mm. and uh, Bayer on there as well. So talk to me a bit about that, how that emerged to be one of the greatest trios we've ever seen in world football, Joshua. I think when you think about when Bell went to Real Madrid, there's still question marks. Can mm. he make that step up? Is he going to be Ronaldo's side, you know, not side piece, but his side show, you know, is it, it's time for him to blow? Because he had, I want to say he had one good season at Tottenham, but that, that season at AVB, was it AVB when he got in the top four? His final they were season, sensational. Yeah. He was sensational, and it was like, well, he's not one hit wonder, but can he adapt into that into that league? He comes in, he's playing against people like you know, Benzema, Ronaldo, big reputations, and he talk about the moments there getting goals at Porto, Champions League twenty fourteen. What he did in Kiev four years after, or yeah, twenty eighteen. There's players that kicked ball for twenty years at the highest level, ain't scored anything like that. Have those big moments. I would feel, you know, disrespected a little bit by you know the magisters because it's like, hold on, fair enough, you've got ballers on ballers, but I'm doing it. I'm getting it done. I'm scoring these goals. You look at the Copadera, um, the Copadera win with you know the Bartra goal that we're talking about, but he adapted to, to life and he he, he he registered his name and be an excellent footballer. You think about his performances for Wales as well in the Euros. Getting them to the Euros yeah. and the World Cup was an achievement in itself for Gareth Bale and Farrell Ramsey, respectively. Yeah, they, they, semi-finals they, 2016 after yeah. winning the Champions League. Crazy yeah, yeah, talent yeah, that Gareth yeah. Bale had all season yeah. long. And you know, Trap speaks about training. He, he probably checked out football years ago, really, <laughs> Bell. Because yeah. he, he made, he, and he's honest, he played more golf in his latter years than he kicked ball. But some people like that. That's okay. It's, it, I think it's that was, yeah. I think that was when basically he scored that goal against Liverpool. We never really saw, again, yeah, prime Gareth Bell after that, really. He had his shining moment. He had his greatest moment of football. And when you look at it from a mental point of view, not to get too deep, but how do you then get better than that when the greatest <laughs> player in your when greatest player in your club is leaving? And then the onus is now on you. And he just never really lived up to that. And he thought, you know what? Let me try and get out of this door quietly. But he ended up winning another Champions League medal against Liverpool when Vinicius Jr. ended up scoring the winning goal in Paris. So he actually became, what, a sixth time? 
Five time Champions League winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was there, wasn't he? In twenty twenty one. Yeah, he's he, 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 Yeah, yeah. I don't like saying these, you know, these things because it kind of it feels like I'm anti English, anti British. But if he was English, you'd never hear the end of Gareth Bell. Mm. You would never hear the end of it. You wouldn't. That's the truth. Um, a fan, fine, fine footballer, decorated. You know, he's got a decorated career. Mm. He's and, and and decorated because he won those moments as well. Um, yeah, and, and back to your original question. Sorry, in terms of Barcelona and oh, Barcelona, but the MSN thing and you know Benzema and you know Bell and Ronaldo, it worked. Mm. It works, which is so nice. Like you don't always see it working. You know, with, with you have all these top players come at one time, and it's nice. When you know Real Madrid for years, years wanted that Champions League. That's all they wanted. Yeah. You know, if you were R nine, you couldn't do it. You know, Zidane couldn't do it after Hamden Park. So to get that through, and even when Ronaldo first came, they couldn't do it. They changed the whole team Bell. after a couple of years as well. Got rid of Alonso. Got rid of no, Alonso, they got rid of like Ozil. They got rid yeah. of a few other players as well around the team. Crazy to see what happened. Yeah, Ozil left that year. You're correct. Yeah, and mm. then yeah, so. Ah oh, man, for me, Bell Bell's had a fantastic career, doesn't you know? And it's gonna be hard for players, all the things, all the all the top ten players. Hard to see that coming through right now. And Mbappe is the only one, and he's obviously he's got a World Cup, so he's already in that bracket. But outside yeah. that, people talk about De Bruyne. Yeah, man, but when he's putting hammies in Istanbul, going off in Porto, I'm, I'm, I'm not having it. <laughs> not having it not at having all. It from the gym. <laughs> not having it. <laughs> I'm glad you, you got. No, nah, I'm glad you got some some humor out of this evening. A very dark evening for Ghana football fans. But again, when we're posting this, it's not going to mean anything at the time of speaking, which is all good as well. But we've got our ten players, everyone. Really well done. And now we've got to make our list. And I think it's only right to have Gareth Bale starting us off at number ten. Are we happy with that one? Yeah, Gareth Bale at 10. Then at number nine, I think it would be fair to put Janino at number nine. Are we happy with that one? Yeah. Janino yeah. at number nine. Number eight, I'm going to maybe. I'm sorry, I, may... I mean, I think I'd put Janino at 10, to be fair. And, oh, yeah, and... exactly. Exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. Put right, Janino me... at 10. I'll keep yeah, a note of this on my phone instead. Uh, Janino at number 10. Number nine, we've got Gareth Bale. Yeah. Number... number eight, should we go for Francesco Totti, number eight? That sounds fair, yeah. Francesco Totti, number eight. Number seven. Ooh. Number seven, let's go for Karen Benzema, I think. Number seven. I think it would be mm. fair to put Karen Benzema at number seven. Number six. I don't want to put him the slow, but I'm going to have to put Kaka at number six, I'd reckon. What do you think, Joshua? Yeah, I put six. I think Bell should be higher, low-key, though. I can't lie. Match winning performances in the final. That's got to go up there. Mm-hmm. Hide it. I think, do you know what? I think he's got to go above Totti. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For the Champions League heritage. As soon as I heard Totti's name, I was like, mm, he ain't white as well. <laughs> right, let's go again. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just to, conf- just to confirm everyone, Janino stays at 10. Janino is the 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no changes there. Number nine, we are going for Francesco Totti. Totti nine. Yeah. 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 Totti nine. Number eight, are we gonna go for uh, Kaka, Benzema, or Bale? Where are we going for this? I'll go. I'll go Kaka, Kaka Benzema, Kaka. Bale. Kaka. Yeah, Kaka. Yeah. Kaka, 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 Kaka but then Bale, yeah. Yeah, Bale's got to be there. Yeah, Bale's got to be high. Benzema seven, Bale six. Yeah, that Bale works. Six. Number five, are we gonna go for R nine? Oh, I'm trying to remember who didn't. Remember who this, is, this, this is this is where the craziness happens. Ooh. Yeah, probably has to be R9 because if you've got CR7, Messi, Zidane, Ronaldinho, a... Ronaldinho. Mm. oh, wait, and we're saying what? No, for me, oh, I'll have to put R9 above Ronaldinho. Same no. here, really? Yeah, yeah, what do you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't even one of the original ones, and the whole point was they won the Champions League as well. I so... know, but uh, R9... No, no, I'm not having that. Ronaldinho, that, that for me, Ronaldinho is my goat, man. Ronaldinho over my... R9. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, the only reason why the only reason why you say that is because of R9's what ifs. Yeah, but reality, Ronaldinho, he, he done the job, in it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? He, he done the job, but yeah, and he got it over the line, but so I yeah, that, I know I Ronaldinho's the original, he's the godfather, but no, no. It's a flip of a coin thing. It's a flip of a coin thing, that one, I think. Anyone got, yeah, anyone, yeah, got, yeah, anyone, yeah. got anyone got a coin? Well, I've got a coin right here. Let's go. That's two true, <laughs> Two pounds. It better be double sided. Hey, so, so, tra- tra- traps, traps and I are heads. Traps and I are heads. Joshua yeah. and Matthew are tails. That's fair. Wait, wait. Let me spin that properly. That's block. Please. Yeah. Yeah. 
that means Ronaldinho's at uh, no, Ronaldo's at five, yeah? Come on. I should know. Ronaldinho's no. at five, Ronaldo's at four. Four, yeah. yeah. No. But that's it. That's Ronaldinho's decent. That's five. good. In terms of showman, though, as well, that's crazy to think. I know, but nah, gotta be honest. Oh, no, it's just that guy, man. That's okay. Are we very happy with Zinedine Zidane at number three? Yeah. yeah oh, three. This, this is the one I just, oh, God. Remember, it's in terms of showman, it's in terms of Champions League, so it's not about the greatest of all time. It's not about your favorite player over the best forever. It's about in terms of showman. Oh. If you wanted to watch YouTube, if you were all to go down now um, off the podcast and switch on YouTube and you think, Let's watch the top 10 goals or the top 10 skills or the best moments of. Are you going to the blue pill of Lionel Messi or are you going to the red pill of Cristiano Ronaldo? Which side are you going to? Ronaldo's number one, man. Ronaldo's one for me. Mr. Yeah. Champions League, come on, man. Do you know what? As much as I love... As much as I love Ronaldo... Um, both of them. Both of them. I'm going to have to go with... Yeah, Ronaldo won for me. Do you know, yeah. like, I, I love Messi. I think his moments have gone, go on YouTube, see fantastic goals. But if you just think, you know, if you say to any one of us, like, our, us guys that watch Sport of it's Ronaldo, it's Cristiano, number one, man. Like, he just, Champions League is him. It's him. I'll be honest with you. I don't think any, any, and, and even, even his headers in the final, even his goals in the final, I don't yeah. think, any Messi Champions League moment will top that bicycle kick against Juventus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think it does. Again, the stadium, uh, the stadium applauded him as well. Buffon was like, I'm yeah. not sure if he's human after conceding that goal as well. So again, crazy to think about what he's And look at the time of his career he did that as well. Yeah, this 33, is the thing. 34 was, years old. He was doing bits at that end of the period to, to annoy you know, any sort of debate. He, he, he Ronaldo is number one, man. It's not for me, listen. Ronaldo is number one, one as well. All I'm saying is the Europa League version of this top 10 list is going to be even more difficult in terms of showing mm. when we're talking about this later down the line as well. But um, yeah, just before we um, we end our podcast, it's been a two-hour special for everyone listening. So I hope you've all enjoyed it. Number 10, we're going for Janino from Leon. Number nine, R Rome's eternal son, Francesco Totti. Number eight, someone I always considered a stardust caca. Again, here for a short time, but an amazing time nevertheless. Number seven, we've gone for Karim Benzema for his iconic run in the 2021-22 no, season um, at Real Madrid. Number six, Gareth Bale, especially for his two goals in the Kia final, that incredible winning goal, I would say, in the 2014 La Decima final as well. Number five, we're going for everyone's favourite YouTuber, Ronaldinho, who broke the internet year in, year out with his incredible skill, flair, and amazing joy of a footballer as well. Number four, we're going for R9, the biggest what if in football. Ronaldo Nazario is at number four for us. Number three, we're going for a couple of our goats. Um, Zinedine Zidane, an amazing footballer to watch. And if you have any decency about yourself, you will not compare Kevin De Bruyne to Zinedine Zidane. Zidane, <laughs> Amen. Sits, at his, Zidane sits at his own table. That's all I'm Say saying. Say that again. Thank you very much. Amen. <laughs> for those at the back. <laughs> gotta preach, gotta preach, gotta preach. <laughs> Number two on the greatest Champions League showman, we are going for Lionel Messi because at number one, we are going for Mr. Champions League, Cristiano Ronaldo. Traps is getting ready to see this game with Ronaldo against Porto once again because he needs to see that goal before he goes to bed today because that goal was <laughs> out of this world. Incredible goal. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this list. What a podcast it was. What a debate we had and what a conversation we all brought to the table today. Before we wrap up, I've got to thank everyone for listening today. I've got to thank everyone for joining in with a fantastic conversation. Joshua, starting off with you for the outro. Thank you very much for your time. As always, I'm really happy that you got to um, be on this podcast as well. And thank you for also bringing it up as well, because last time we recorded, it was kind of down to your conversation. We thought, you know what? Let's talk about old school Mavericks and they came to the table today which is incredible so nicely done there joshua thanks man really enjoyed being on it reminiscing and talking about the best of the games and the, the reason why we love it so much away from our football clubs but just the players that are balled out man and the, the, those moments that you know until we get our 50s 60s 70s we'll be thinking about oh do you remember ronaldo de stepos over mm. ghana like, like, i'm never gonna forget those moments so it's nice it's, it's interesting we all have similar views but disagree and agree like you know in terms of we're talking about Bell and we're talking about Arnai, Rodinho. Omitting Neymar as well. Okay. Yeah, Neymar didn't get looking and just so many good ballers, man. And yeah, no Frank Ribery either. 
Yeah, no, Ruby, yeah, but Ruby's a fraud. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Old claim, I, man. I, I, could, I could be here for years like that, but yeah, no, enjoyable, man. Yeah, enjoyable to all you guys, man. Enjoyable. Nah, it's all good. And someone who also brought the enjoyable fact today was Traps as well. So Traps, thank you very much for joining us on this podcast again. It's great to see you doing your thing. And again, thanks for joining us because it's been absolutely fantastic and a breath of fresh air to have you on our podcast as well with your unfiltered opinions and mostly your very fantastic football knowledge in terms of old school football. So, so thank you very much for bringing um, your conversation today, Traps. And the ginger beer as well. This is this can has been for like two hours, by the way. So I appreciate you getting me through without coughing and sneezing and that much as well. So again, thank you very much, Traps. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure, man. Yeah. Shout out to Joshua for holding it together because we know what's happened to Ghana right now. <laughs> yeah, he's held it together very, the very well. The obituary is being written right now as well for the country. Half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, Matthew, always a pleasure about you boys, man. It's always good fun. It's always good chat. It's always, it's always, it's nice and refreshing because I'm always on social media. All I'm right. saying is I don't want you coming on this podcast with high blood pressure. I don't want you sc- sc- <laughs> ranting and screaming like you do normally. I need you to be calm and civilised with this one. So, yeah, I'm, always, I, I'm always rattling. I'm always trolling. I'm always debating. I'm always arguing. This is like, a, this is like, this is like, this is like my piece. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just talk about football and it's all good. It's all smiles. It's all debates. It's all healthy debate. And I love it here, man. And it's always a pleasure. Nah, I appreciate it. Nicely done. And someone who also brought the heat today as well. And I'm glad to see his podcast can continuously growing week by week. It's great to see as well. And at the time of recording, he finally released our podcast when I joined him for a conversation of Team of the Season so far. So make sure, again, it's going to be like March, April when I release this. But if you are curious and you want to see more from Matt and Back of the Net podcast, by all means, go check out the podcast when I gave my favourite team of the season so far is an anti-London team podcast. I found it quite funny that my team has still not been promoted yet on Matt's social media. But Matt, thank you very much for bringing the heat today <laughs> and for speaking, especially about Thierry Henry and all the Mavericks and ballers that Arsenal have had, which is what? Dennis Burkham, Ozil and Henri, right? You, no one else really came to your mind, no? Nothing? That's cool. Cool. No, no, no. no Robert no. Perez. Robert. Didn't want to mention him. Well, he's in a This guy's in <laughs> Nacho he, won, won the league OT. he won the league OT in it. So. He did, he did, he did. First Na- lap, Nacho yeah. Monreal. Sanchez. <laughs> Alexis Sanchez would have been in there. Wait, you Man United fans actually mocking my team. It's cool. It's cool. Adi Adi Air. Adi Adi Air is there. Ali Adi Air. All that talking. Francis Jeffers. All that talking, you still got Anthony. Allow it. And Onana. Allow it, bro. Andre allow Santos. Swapping shirts at halftime at Old Trafford with Van Persie <laughs> as well. Crazy. Oh, boy. But no, honestly, thanks for having me on the Hamza. Traps, pleasure as always, man. Listen, I think it's that good little vibe we've got going. And that trap said, Joshua, for you to watch, you know, your country whilst on this, I I couldn't. Like, I'd be struggling. I can't lie. <laughs> but just, all you need to know, Joshua, I sent you a little clip so you can see the second goal. It is horrendous. Hey, Matt, you could go to hell, bruv. You no, could no, go to hell. hell. Hamza, clip that. <laughs> no, I need, I, need, I need one thing that I can clip right now as well, so I'm going to clip it. Joshua, before we wrap up as well, <laughs> Is this is Ghana getting knocked out of Afcon 2024 worse than when you lost to Uruguay in Qatar? Because that was a crazy game as well. I need to hear it from a Ghana perspective. Nothing, nothing worse than South Africa. That's <laughs> <laughs> that and Aguero, I've never recovered. <laughs> Don't be serious. I've not recovered. But you know what it is? I was following the game while we were doing this pod, of course, trying to stay professional. It was 2 0. We've got another penalty. I'm like, calm. <laughs> And it's, it's just the moment you ask me what you know, what, listen back to the pod, and it's that Jorginho question. And I'm just trying, I'm just stuttering because <laughs> what do you mean, God, I fucking effed it? What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> Josh, Joshua, Josh, just Joshua, Joshua. Did, did um, so did Egypt win? No, they they no, like Verdi. Egypt are through. So, They're so, through they the so if you if you were the one, would you've gone through? Yeah, we'd have gone through second place, four points. Wow. So even... and now we've got two. We've got two points now. We're not, we're don't, not... you think, don't, don't you think that? Don't you think that it, when, when you when you when you when you when you bottle things like this, that you kind of half want Egypt to win to make it seem like you just couldn't qualify anyway? You nearly <laughs> yeah. got there. It's you like when you're, you're struggling for a rep and you just want to yeah. do like a you want to breathe yeah. really heavily as well. <laughs> Doing a David de Gea versus Man City in the FA Cup final. Ooh, that Gundogan chance, crazy. <laughs> 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 The Nigerian brothers are going to go, wow, they've won. 
They want back to back. The, the so tweets they, that yeah. are going off, brother. There's one about the IU brothers as well. They, they, they just like... like it's the just IU brothers are frauds for Ghana. That's all I'm saying. They've just ruined them completely. I know Listen, Jordan IU scored, but I can't be having that. You need to see the little clip. Team. Someone go. There's little two little kids dancing who goes, oh, this is a Bede Pele with his two sons. I'm like, can you stop? Please. Like, it's just too much. Joshua, don't go online today. Don't. That's, not, that's the thing. You know, that's the problem. When you're not lose, you can't. You win people. Your team loses. You have to shut down after a while. And it's annoying. Yeah. I That's can't win. Doing. When Arsenal don't win, I get on Twitter, I go on Insta, and Traps is just <laughs> reposting every funny video regarding Arsenal. I can't, I can't deal with it. But you know what? Yeah, because you see, good. You know what? Yeah, you see, you see, you see the Arsenal, uh, the Arsenal trolling mill. It, it's so strong. Yeah, I as soon as as soon as Arsenal lose, it's like it's like a goal. Like the floodgates just open. It's like. Have you seen this? I just, and this comes time and time again. It's, oh, mate. Matt's like I Legolas love... in Lord of the Rings. He's at the front of the line as well, beginning with the trolling as well. We've got to win the league. It's going to happen. It's Five nil. because you're good, isn't it? You're good low-key. And you you not lost much in 18 months. So that Christmas period is hilarious. That's yeah, yeah. Of... Yeah, no, like, I, what? I, I, I admit it. Because when we were top, I was like, oh, it's all right. And then we're going from there to just... And now City got Harlem back. That's, for me, that's the only thing that will appease me in the sense of like, because no one was really brands from C. No one supports C. It's all lies, bro. No one supports C. It's all, it's all, you know, all nonsense. Not when, not but... when, not when you live on Stoke on Trent and you work in Manchester like me, you're surrounded by them. Oh boy. <laughs> work for a Man United fan channel and you're just there, like, oh, City fans everywhere. <laughs> the hate is real. Um, but yeah, before we wrap up again, thank you very much, everyone. It's been a fantastic conversation and probably my, our longest podcast this year, but absolutely fantastic and well yeah. worth it. For everyone listening to the end, thank you very much. I applaud you. And be sure to follow everyone on their social medias and other channels this year as well, which would be great. Everyone take care. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah,